Pirates pedestal has built a tradition like no other in college football. The Clemson Tigers are firmly established as a force in the South, entrenched in a stadium known as Death Valley. They are the number three ranked team in the country. But coach Danny Ford has number one on his mind, dreaming of carrying the Clemson banner toward a national championship. At the start of the season, Florida State was ranked number one, but their championship hopes were dashed on opening night when they were shut out by Miami. It was a nightmare. But the Seminoles remain one of the strongest teams in the nation. Their mission today, gain back some respect in the football community. Florida State visits Clemson's Death Valley today on CBS. Death Valley as CBS Sports welcomes you to college football 1988. From Clemson, South Carolina, the Tigers will take on the Seminoles of Florida State. And despite our bad weather, it will not dampen the enthusiasm of some 80,000 who will jam into this stadium here this afternoon. One of the loyalest football fans anywhere in the nation. And they have come to see their Tigers host the Seminoles. Clemson welcomes everyone to Death Valley, one of the toughest arenas for a visiting team down through the years and a tough assignment this afternoon for Bobby Bowden. Weather conditions, well, the temperature is pleasant, but it has rained a half inch here this morning, and the forecast is for more rain, so we will have a muddy going throughout the day. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. We have a game here this afternoon with national title implications. A couple of weeks ago, you remember when the Seminoles of Florida State were rated number one, the preseason consensus choice to win the national championship. Nebraska and Clemson was number three, followed by Oklahoma. Now, a couple of weeks later, Miami has pole vaulted to number one. UCLA has been a solid force in the West Coast, and Clemson is still number three with Florida State ranked number 10. And Pat Hayden, what about this game and the implications of a championship for both these teams? Well, Brent, I think in 1981, Clemson showed a team for the Atlantic Coast Conference could win a national championship, and I think they're very much in the hunt this year. And they're in the hunt because, first, they have a very good football team, and secondly, their schedule is really set up very, very well. They only play three teams. I think they can beat them. Florida State today, Duke in about mid season and then South Carolina at the end of the year all three of those teams have to come in here to Death Valley and that is a tough place for anybody to win you know Pat it's going to be tough for Florida State but not impossible with one loss they must win this one today and of course the question you want to put to Bobby Bowden is how did you restore the confidence of your players after the massacre in Miami well after the thrashing Brad that took care of itself our football team uh, looked like an entirely different football team the next Monday than they did before we went into the Miami football game I mean you talk about deflated egos we we all had a bunch of deflated egos. Now, uh, their attitude's been good since then, uh, but we, we will not regain the respect of uh, anybody until we win against somebody like Clemson or another top-ranked team. So, Bobby and the players will try to restore some respect here this afternoon. The weather now, Pat, what kind of a twist does that bring to this game? Very much a factor, obviously. I think this game is going to key on turnovers. Coming in today's game, Clemson's only had one. Florida State, 11. Nine of those by the pass. They have to run the ball better today to win. Now, you and I agree. One of our favorite traditions in all of college athletics is here at Death Valley. The players from the Clemson Tigers will take a bus and then they'll pour down that hill and they will be touching today what is a slippery rock we'll be back for that but right now let's send you to new york for an update on what's going on in college football here's jim nance and era parsega all right well thank you brent a wild and wet one in west virginia today playing in the rain maryland went in front 14 to nothing on the 12th ranked mountaineers before west virginia stormed back with eight seconds to go before halftime trailing 21 17 quarterback major harris on the bootleg Puts the Mountaineers a leg up at the intermission. They now lead 41-24 with 13 minutes to go. Penn State and Boston College.
Conference just starting the third. BC giving the 16th ranked Nittany Lions a go there. Notre Dame and Michigan State, the Irish leading midway through the third. The story, Reggie Ho, two for two today in field goals. That makes the five foot five place kicker six for six on the season. Many of you have heard Alabama and Texas A&M postponed because of a possible hurricane threat of Hurricane Gilbert and three other small college games were postponed today as well. Baseball last night, what a story for Tom Browning of Cincinnati. He threw a perfect game. Here's the final out. Tracy Woodson, the pinch hitter, strikes out, completing the perfect game for Tom Browning, the first one in baseball since Mike Witt of the Angels, 1984. And Browning improves his mark now to 16 and 5 on the season after the perfect game. Yankees and Boston in the fifth. Surprise starter Charles Hudson of the Yankees with a no-hitter in the fifth inning. And Eric, let's talk about a little more of what's at stake here in this game between Clemson and Florida State. Well, as you know, Jim, I picked eight teams before the season started that had the potential of winning the national championship. These two were among them. But the team that loses in this game is out of it. Florida State would suffer its second loss. And in the case of Clemson, even though they have one loss, their schedule is not going to allow them to come back into the championship picture because it's too weak. I agree with that. What's it get down to in this game, you think? I think the quarterbacks is going to be a focus on the quarterbacks, but it's not going to be so much the completions as much as it's going to be the quarterback that avoids the big interception. All right, Errol. We're back here at halftime, of course, but coming up, the Seminoles and Tigers will rejoin Brent and Pat down in Death Valley after this message and a word from your local station. All Tiger Paws lead to Clemson, South Carolina, and Death Valley. Inside some 80,000 now preparing to watch their beloved Tigers take on the Florida State Seminoles as Bobby Bowden brings a team to play in Death Valley for the first time in his illustrious career. Note the white pants. The first time that they have worn white pants since 1958. They had a running back by the name of Burt Reynolds. He remembers the white pants. He likes them so much that he purchased them for the football team here today. The other end of the stadium, well, the Clemson team prepared to board the buses and then they were brought around to the top of the hill. There are the buses at the far end of the stadium. And they drove around behind the stadium and they are now poised at the top of the hill. They will all come down and touch the famous rock as they pour onto the floor of Death Valley, South Carolina. And let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat. All right, Brent, thank you. I'm on the hill where some of the biggest names in Clemson football have come down this hill. William Perry, Dwight Clark, Charlie Waters, and hundreds of players you've probably never heard of, but they're all part of this tradition. The Rock. It was brought here September 19th, 1942, by the legendary Frank Howard. He said it had mystical powers. The players touched it on that day. 20 points. Now, this is the 202nd time they'll come running down this hill, said to be one of the greatest spectacles in college sports. Football fans, let's enjoy one of the most exciting 30 seconds in the game. and Florida State coming your way on CBS in just a moment.
CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, it's the Florida State Seminoles versus the Clemson Tigers. Today's CFA game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. AC Delco, automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. And by Michelob. Michelob is a proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. A sea of orange in Death Valley as Richie Andrews of the Seminoles prepares to kick it off. Florida State winning the toss, electing to defer. Clemson thus will receive. Clemson wearing its lucky orange pants. But Danny Ford has not been that lucky playing in the rain. Under Coach Ford, who has been here for 10 years, they are 7-3-1 in soggy conditions. This is Henderson, two yards deep, and he'll bring it out. Does not get to the 20-yard line. Reagans brings him down. Rodney Williams will bring Clemson to the attack. The senior quarterback, Tracy Johnson, the fullback. Joe Henderson, his first start. The wide receivers are talented, but they don't throw to him very often. They also have Cooper. He's the third one to watch. The tight end is a blocker, James Coley. Now, the offense features the toss play, a dangerous play in wet, soggy conditions. There were some difficulties in that toss during pregame warm-ups. Let's see what they feature to begin with. Williams, the signal caller. They'll run the fullback, the conservative first down. He gets to the 20 before Keith Carter, number 59, slams him down. The offensive line from Darien, Connecticut. The anchor is Jeff Back. Alongside him, Eric Harmon and Hank Phillips, whose brother played here. The tackles, Delulius and Nunnemacher. They are very good in that offensive line, and they are extremely deep. The offensive line could well determine the outcome of a game on a soggy field. Now it is second and five for Williams. the first toss and this is Allen who brought the play in short of a first down the Seminole defense here this afternoon Odell Higgins in the middle he has been slowed by an injured ankle senior and Gabbard alongside him the inside linebackers Carter and Hayes outside Moss and Hadley someone must step up and become the leader of this bunch Deion Sanders does a superb job in the secondary, but they need one up front. Third and two now for Clemson. Johnson for the first down. If Clemson's going to win today, they want to get themselves in third and two and third and three. That is their kind of football. They run the ball, power football at you, get you in third and two, and give it to their big backs. That time, Johnson over a nice block by DeUlius, the left tackle. That's secondary for Florida State. Dion and Tracy Sanders, not related. And the safeties are excellent. Shiver and Butler, they must have a big game here this afternoon. Now it is first and ten. The ball is at the Clemson 30-yard line. Cooper in motion. Johnson again up the middle as they pound away at Coach Bobby Bowden's midsection. Gabbard makes the stop. It's amazing to me that uh, Clemson has been able to run this ball early in the game, Brent, because she has an eight-man front that's really you're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six. Out of the picture is seven, and the strong safety's been up here. An eight-man front. They are daring Clemson to throw the football. Nothing fancy about Clemson. The vanilla attack, you must break them down man for man. They'll come right at you. Second and six. Here's the toss play to Allen from the right side. And Allen is met with good resistance that time by the Seminoles. Felton Hayes, 46, the first to hit him. And he had a lot of help. Tracy Sanders, number 16, was also in on the stop. They must get to the 40 for a first down. Make it a third and three. Clemson is a very good option team and a very good draw team. All three of the wide receivers are out there. On third and three, they show a slot formation to the left. And they will run Allen for another first down as he busts out to midfield. 
12-yard burst without a tight end, so they spread out the Florida State defense and attacked it with the run. They spread the defense to try to prevent the eight-man front, but watch Tracy Johnson, the fullback, who really clears the way on the sprint draw to number Allen. Watch the left-hand side of your screen. The fullback, number 42, kicks out of the linebacker, and that's the sprint draw that they feature on third and four and five. A very good draw team. Opening series for the Tigers of Clemson. First down at midfield. Hooper is the motion man. Williams keeps it off the option and busts out for six yards before Derek Dodge, 28, tackles him. Rodney Williams is a quarterback here. He's been a starter for four years, and he's a guy that's come under some criticism here because he has he's not a flashy type of runner uh, player, but he does know how to run the option. He moves his team, and he wins football games, and that's all that Danny Ford cares about with his offense. Play is brought in from Coach Ford's sideline. Jennings and Cooper are the wide men. They bring Jennings in motion. And they run Allen. He is short of the first down. They will be in third and short again, however, as Eric Hayes, 78, in on that stop. And it brings up the third third and short in this series their eighth play and eight eight runs but all the third downs have been right where Clemson wants Danny Ford says he can win the game if he gets in third and two and here he is again it is a short three Johnson and they pitch it out to Allen for another first down slick ball handling by Rodney Williams Terrific play selection by Chuck Reedy, the offensive coordinator. But watch the quarterback as he sells it. He fakes the ball to the fullback. He's been carrying the ball all day. You have to respect the fullback. And then Rodney Williams makes a beautiful pitch right out in front of Allen. And that ball is easy to catch. There are three of three in those third down situations. They have advanced the ball down to the Florida State 33-yard line for a first and ten. Cooper is in the slot to the right. The fullback moves right straight ahead. Eric Hayes in the middle of that. And just incredible, the Florida State defense continues to play an eight-man front, and yet Clemson is still being able to run the ball. They are daring them to throw the football, and if they get a chance, they're going to have some receivers one-on-one -on -one with some very talented corners from Florida State. So this puts Clemson in a second and 11 as Williams was stopped that time. Seven Seminoles up on the line. Have they forced Clemson to throw it. There's a bad snap on the exchange. Williams pulled away early. Ball was on the ground on the exchange. When you play in rainy conditions like this, it's up to the quarterback to stay in a little bit longer to make sure you don't have bad exchanges. It's the quarterback's responsibility to hang in there and give the center as much help as he can. Cooper, Cooper, and Jennings, the wide receiver. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> Third and 11. They'll test Rodney's arm this time. Straight back. The far sideline caught out of bounds. He said Gary Cooper was out of bounds here. Remember, you have to come down with at least one foot in in college football. The ball is pretty well thrown, although he leaves him too far away from the defender. His foot is on the line there, and that's out of bounds. Good call by the official. And good defense by Felton Hayes. Chris Gardaki is the freshman field goal kicker here at Clemson. He is also expected to handle the punting duties here this afternoon. So the additional burden on the two-step punter against a ferocious rush sometimes from Florida State, the punt block is always a possibility, an unusual defensive alignment for Florida State. They send no one back, and Gardaki 
hangs one and it goes into the end zone. Big error there kicking that ball into the end zone. You got to get the ball out inside the 10 yard line from there. So when you come back it'll be Florida State's ball first and 10 at their own 20. No score in Clemson South Carolina and with Pat Hayden and Pat O'Brien I'm Brent Musburger Florida State in Clemson now the Seminole offense Chip Ferguson again their starting quarterback but a change at running back Dane Williams will go at fullback but Dexter Carter has replaced Sammy Smith as the starting tailback outside receivers are talented Terry Anthony and Ronald Lewis Reggie Johnson moves in as the starting tight end interestingly enough it is somewhat better to throw in these conditions early rather than late Well, the field is still in good shape on first down they run the fullback right straight ahead into the middle of that Clemson defense and Rich McCullough is there to make the stop on Williams the rest of the offensive line Kuipers this year has been moved to center and they have had some difficulty at guard injuries and inexperience Mike Morris and Hayward Haynes are there Ayanata and Tomberlin 300 pound Pat Tomberlin the All-American prospect starting at that tackle he was the big fellow in the New York right now they need seven of them Ferguson to throw on second down under a ferocious rush cannot get away from John Johnson the blitzing backer and it was Mark Gregg the nose man who put the early pressure on Ferguson two weeks ago the center Jason Kuypers had a tough time blocking the rush. Watch the nose tackle right here. He's going to make a quick run and get into Ferguson very quickly. And on the outside, you're going to see number 12, John Johnson, get in. You see drag the 85, beat Kuypers very quickly. He's got a great swim move. Gets right over the center, and then Johnson makes the tackle. Victor Floyd checks in at fullback to face this Clemson defense after that nine-yard loss. Third and 16 for the Seminoles. And they run the draw play with Floyd. And a terrific run out of trouble. He stepped out of bounds with a first down for Florida State. A great play call as the Tigers were looking elsewhere. And there is a penalty marker down. They're bringing it back. Is that a really a surprising call on third and long when you're backed up? I'm surprised the Clemson team didn't do a better job of defending it. That was just excellent execution there by the offense. And Victor Floyd picked up a couple of nice inside blocks and saw where the markers were. Strong block on Lott, the corner on that side, taking him back out of the play. But it is all for naught. Bring it back. Holding on that offense. An update on the Michigan State Notre Dame game last Saturday night the Irish beating Michigan in that drama in South Bend West Virginia a sleeper for the title a big one later on when Penn State goes in there and LSU beating up on Tennessee we look forward to seeing LSU in a couple of weeks down in Gainesville Pat that'll be a bend Florida and LSU Dexter Carter now swinging wide to the right side falls loose ball came out and it will be fourth down. Victor Floyd wrapped up the loose ball, but it was a shaky first series by Florida State. And terrific defense there by Clemson, a aided by a penalty. And now Donald Wolford, one of the country's best punt returners, has a chance to put the Clemson offense on a short playing field. In a battle of field position, advantage Clemson. Florida State cannot advance beyond the 20. Tim Corlew standing inside his five-yard line. He'll hang one now to Wolford. Showdown between Wolford and Deion Sanders. Driven back to the 35 on a strong punt and a great break of that first tackle. And there are penalty markers down all over the field. It was a 47-yard punt and a seven-yard return. What I like about both of these punt returners that we're going to see today, Wolford and Sanders, they don't dance around. When they get the ball, they get right up field. And that's why they're averaging 11 to 15 yards of punt return. The clip on the return. That'll set Clemson back. You know, they've, they've been averaging about seven penalties a game. That concerns Danny Ford. He wants to know the number of the player who is guilty of that clip. We'll be right back. Scoreless first quarter. Here it is scoreless in the first quarter. Clemson wearing their lucky orange 
orange uniforms, pants, and jerseys. Florida State breaks out the white pants for the first time since the late 50s. They were purchased by actor Burt Reynolds. First and 10 for the Tigers. Ball at the 26, and Williams completes the first pass he has thrown to Jennings, who has carried out of bounds by Tracy Sanders. And Brent, that play is going to be there all day if Florida State continues to play the eight-man front. It's one-on-one -on -one out here with Jennings and Sanders. Remember, Jennings is 6'4". He's a big old target. He's 235 pounds. And he just goes down there, hooks up for a very easy throw. Ball is spotted at the 31. Well, Jennings is a great blocker, too, Brent. He really can, when there's an option play on the corner, he can make a 15-yard gain out of a five-yard run with his blocking. Schools turned out some superb wide receivers. Dwight Clark, Jerry Butler, two of the better ones to come out of Death Valley. Ball on the ground. Rodney Williams kept it a little too long that time. The referee indicating that Clemson recovered the fumble as Williams went diving back after it and grabbed it in time. You know, Brent, sometimes that'll happen when you're playing on a wet, a wet day. You're so careful. He's holding the ball in the fullback's lap a little bit too long, and he tipped it there, and, and he fumbled down there on the ground. Holding the ball in the fullback's stomach too long. Oklahoma leading Arizona by four. Penn State over Boston College in the third, and Colorado shutting out the Buckeyes. Third and four for Clemson. The pitch after the fake to the fullback, and Allen out of bounds at the 39-yard line. A first down for the Tigers. Great setting here. Downstairs to Pat O'Brien. Pat. All right, Brent, thank you. To tell you how soggy and wet they expect it to be today, they usually use six game balls in a football game. Today they have 12 balls in rotation and 36 balls in here just so they can have dry balls on the field. And Pat Hedden playing for Southern Cal. You probably never had that problem, did you? I was, I was a wimp, Pat. We never played in the rain. You're right. I couldn't play in this kind of weather. <laughs> First and 10 for the Tigers. Here comes the end around, and they're going to throw off it. Plenty of time. They go downfield. He's all alone. Cooper's got it for a touchdown. Gary Cooper from Chip Davis, 61 yard Clemson touchdown. Potatoes football program turns to a little witchcraft. You know, the defender was number 28, Derek Dodge, but really had it pretty well covered, but then fell down, and Cooper came wide open. A terrific play call after you've been running the fullback all game, though. I like it. Rusty side will attempt the extra point. Morocco is the holder. The point is good, and Clemson leads Florida State seven to nothing. Here is Chip Davis, the wide receiver who came out around in the reverse. Gary Cooper, perhaps the best athlete on this team, after Derek Dodge fell down. Easy catch for the score. Chip Davis. Out of Evans, Georgia, which is in the Augusta area, throws a touchdown pass, and as a high school quarterback, he threw 18 touchdown passes. Rushed and passed for 2,208 yards. He completed 83% of his passes, and that touchdown throw for Clemson, their first touchdown pass of the year. And another one of the traditions here, the mascot will do push-ups, cumulative. That's his first seven of the afternoon. He likes those low-scoring dog fights. <laughs> one about 10 to 3 by the home team. <laughs> Sile to kick it off. And back deep for the Seminoles, Carter and Ross.
Boulder State special teams, Brent, are going to have to come up with a big play in this kind of environment. Get themselves back to some momentum. A half inch of rain has fallen. It will be tough going in the second half of this game. Stepping out of bounds is Ross. Penalty flag is thrown there. Is that where he marked it, or was he calling a penalty on that? Was he already out of bounds? An illegal catch? Did the kick go out? And will they penalize the kicking team? They'll back him up. Let's take a look at that touchdown. Watch from the left-hand side of your screen. You're going to see Chip Davis come around, but it's the sequencing of plays. They ran the option so many times. They ran the fullback. They fake it to him. Chip Davis comes around, and he's going to throw the ball downfield to the wide receiver, Cooper. But sequencing of plays is always the key in college football. They ran the option that time. They faked it. They pitch it out to Davis. Dedrick Dodge, number 28, had him pretty well covered, then slips on the wet turf right there. And then Cooper outruns him. That's a nice throw by Davis. Gave the ball plenty of air to a wide open receiver and let Cooper just run under underneath it. And a happy number seven. Clemson, after the five yard penalty, kicks it off to Ross again. And he gives Florida State a first down at the 37. Well, it's doubleheader Sunday coming up tomorrow on CBS. The NFL today starts at 12.30 Eastern time. Many of you early will see Minnesota, Chicago. That's the rest of the early lineup tomorrow. Late Giants in Dallas, Rams and Raiders. Atlanta goes out to San Francisco after the Joe Montana heroics of a week ago in Giant Stadium. Like a lightning bolt, he hit Jerry Rice to pull one out. Now it is Chip Ferguson and the Seminoles. They trail 7-0 against Clemson. On first down, throws complete over the middle to his tight end, and that was number 80, Reggie Johnson. And another penalty marker is down. One of the reasons they started Reggie Johnson today at tight end rather than O'Malley was they wanted to get the tight end more involved in the passing game and get the ball downfield. Defensive holding. Nope. Either way, they're going to have the first down. I believe they'll take the reception. Coach Ford getting an explanation. Been here 10 years. Back in 81, at the age of 33, he became the youngest head coach ever to win a national championship. And because of the conference and the way they're positioned, this team really has a bit of a mini football dynasty in the ACC. Some of the schools up north in this conference, better known for basketball, North Carolina and Duke. But down here in Clemson, football is king. And Danny's upset because they assessed that penalty after the reception. So it must have been a late foul. ACC battle there. Ivy League underway. First and ten for the Seminoles. Carter. Short of the 40-yard line. Does not get much. That was J.C. Harper, 77, 6'5", 265, a hometown product who hit him first. His father is the defensive coordinator, Tom Harper, and his father told me yesterday he inherited all that slowness that I had. That's why he doesn't start him. But they rotate a lot of players in this team. 29 Clemson players made tackles in the first game. But he's got some of that football savvy of yeah. his daddy. That's what you say when a guy's slow. He's got savvy. <laughs> Second and nine. Against the five-man front. Ferguson to throw. Complete on a no drop. Dossie should have had it. Bobbled the ball. He was open underneath. James Lott, number five, came up and delivered a blow. And you like this kind of call on a rainy day. It's just a little short pass to Doss as he's crossing over the middle. You try to get to a ball, a guy to a ball, uh, the ball to a guy who can run after he catches it, but he was thinking about too much about the run and not enough about the catch. He had it set up beautifully, though. Reggie Johnson brings the play in from the sideline. Dave Roberts back out. That's Anthony, number eight. Dossie, 29 to the top of your screen. Off a of fake. Ferguson sets the screen to Carter, and it was read beautifully by Mervyn Green, number 99. That's a terrific play for a nose tackle. Watch 99, the nose tackle. He's going to be over the center. 
His responsibility is to take anything inside the draws, but when he reads screen, watch, he'll read the offensive lineman on the screen, and that's a heads-up play for Green. Fights through a couple of guys, see all the, sees all the blocks in the running backs, and then you, lumbers 280 pounds over to make the tackle. Corlew gets it off, hangs it high and short. It'll roll dead at the 24-yard line. So Clemson, with a 61-yard touchdown, will take possession after a weak 22-yard punt. The Tigers leading Florida State 7 to nothing here in Death Valley. Brent, so far this game has been what I've expected. Clemson playing strong defense and running the ball, running the option, running their draw plays, and really not throwing the ball much, although the one touchdown came off the... Did the you first. agree with us when we said they had the wrong favorite? Florida State came in here favored by two to three points, and it seems strange because Clemson has the home field advantage here today. Williams barking the signals. That was Coley, the tight end who moved to the other side. Now they're going to try to turn Henderson loose, and he has stopped that time. Keith Carter, 59, out of Miami, hitting him first. And Keith Carter is a very strong inside linebacker, particularly on runs inside the tackles. He's not going to make too many tackles way on the sweeps, but inside he is tough on off-tackle plays. And Rutgers playing strong again. Baylor over Iowa State in the third quarter down in the southwest. Princeton leading Cornell in the Ivy League. Here it is, second and 11 for Clemson. They lead Florida State, seven to nothing. This is McFadden, the backup fullback, no daylight there. Felton Hayes was not knocked out of the play. So they didn't have much blocking over there at the point of attack. Important down here early in this game for the Florida State defense. They have Clemson in third and 10. That is not their kind of situation, not their kind of down. They need to force the punt, get good field position, and get something on the board. Ohan checks in at tight end. After the two-yard gain, it'll be third and nine. The ball for Clemson. Just short of the 25. From the slot, they throw underneath, and it is bobbled. Cooper got a hand on it, but actually the ball was thrown a little bit too far in front of it. Would have been a tough catch for the wide receiver. And Clemson will be punting to the ever-dangerous Deion Sanders. The leading candidate to win the Jim Thorpe Award is the top defensive back in the nation. His number one competition, Donnell Wolford, wearing number 20, returns punts and plays corner for Clemson. The 10-man rush is set against him. The freshman, one step and gone from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And Dion signals for the fair catch in the wet weather today at the 41-yard line. A 34-yard punt by the freshman, and it'll be first down for the Seminoles. Boy, the way Florida State goes after so many punts is like Canadian football. Dion's back there all by himself returning punts sometimes. Dexter Carter, still the tailback for the Seminoles. He replaced Sammy Smith as the starter today. Victor Floyd is now the fullback. Tom O'Malley, the tight end. They fake the draw. Ferguson rolls and throws to Floyd. And that is a strong eight-yard gain before he is taken out of bounds on the far side. And a wonderful play call by Wayne McDuffie, the offensive coordinator. You fake the, uh, the counter flow, the little playoff tackle. Ferguson rolls away from the rush because he's been under duress and then finds Floyd out in the flat, and he's the man they had faked to. Inside of a minute left in the first quarter here in Clemson. The Tigers leading the Seminoles, seven to nothing. Second and one with the ball at midfield. Floyd straight ahead for the first down, or no, he might have been a little short of it. I might have called that a little too quickly. Let's see where they spot that ball and uh, and what the measurement shows us here. It's going to be very, very close. Uh, Pat, what's uh, sort of an overview of what we've seen so far from these two teams in the rain in South Carolina? Well, there's Sammy Smith looking on. He is number 33. He is the man they hope to get a lot of big plays from this year. 
We'll see what he's done in his career, but he's off to a very, very slow start this year. Only gained 48 yards. But overall, I think we've seen Clemson run the ball, which we expected. Here's his comparison to a year ago. First two games. He really has been injured some in the first three games, Brent. They were just short. Third and inches. Williams is the fullback, and Ferguson to throw it, swings it out to Carter on third and short. First down for the Seminoles. Lott forced to make the tackle, and a penalty marker comes down. And there was an unexpected call by the Seminoles, but of course, that is Bobby Bowden. That's what he features, the unexpected. Face Obvious mask. face mask against the Tigers, we are told by our producer, Michael Burks. You're going to see the face mask, but it's a terrific play by James Lott because he is out here all by himself, and he's got a blocker on him. He fights off Ionata, the blocker there, and is there to make the tackle, but there's the clearly the face mask. But Bobby Bowden has always been a student of uh, World War II and, and war history. He thinks the element of surprise is the greatest thing he can have in a football game. Danny Ford is a student of search and destroy. Let's go <laughs> mano mano. Well, the Fighting Irish closing in. And they continue to lead Michigan State, and we get word that it is now a final. Notre Dame wins for the second straight week, beating Michigan State. So they have done business in the state of Michigan. And Brent, one of our favorite guys, I think Reggie Ho had another big day. Well, we've come to the end of the first quarter. We'll check on that, Pat. Clemson 7, Florida State nothing. College football on CBS will return after this message and a word from your local station. From the beautiful state of South Carolina, Clemson leading Florida State 7 to nothing. Notre Dame, meanwhile, makes it 2-0 and oh as Reggie Ho, their hero of last Saturday night, goes 2-2 two for two this afternoon against Michigan State. It was 20 to 3. The Irish win it over the Spartans. That's the final score. Ferguson handing off to Carter. And an orange came out of the stands down there near the 35 yard line. Already, Coach Ford has been told by the officials that they don't want to see that fruit thrown out of the stands down here because obviously someone can be injured. Florida State is a much more versatile team when Dexter Carter, number 13, is in the ballgame because he's such a dangerous receiver out of the backfield. And for a small guy, he's a tough inside runner. Second and seven. Williams and Carter split backs. Anthony and Lewis, the wide man. And a great defensive effort by Mark Drag, number 85. And a penalty marker is down. Mark Drag, I watched film on this week. He is so quick. And Brandy's got that great swim move. He'll take the arm and whip it right over the center's head, and he gets in the backfield very, very quickly. That time, the guard, number 60, Mike Morris, tried to, well, he did wrestle him down there, didn't he? Very, very difficult to, Barton, to block Mark Drag off the line of scrimmage. He's a guy who really didn't want to play much nose guard, Brent, but felt it was the only place in the team we'd have a chance to play. Deep and talented in that defensive line and at the linebacking spot. And this team at Clemson figures to feature defense, field position, kicking all year long. It was declined. So it will be second down, make it third down now. It is longer than that. Mike, they put the ball back at the 41-yard line. It's third and 15. Ferguson straight back. Throws to the far side, open is Carter, and Carter is in for a touchdown. Touchdown, Florida State. A 40-yard pass from Ferguson to Carter, who slipped out of the backfield and went down the far sideline. 
Ferguson has really started off hot. He is five of six today, had one ball dropped, but that ball was beautifully thrown. A lot of touch on the ball made it easy to catch for Carter. In the rain, two long scoring passes so far in this game. Andrews to attempt the extra point. Left foot is up, and this game is tied. Brent, we just talked about how they're more versatile with Dexter Carter in the backfield. This time he lines up the backfield, runs all the way down the left side, and outruns the defender. The ball is thrown in beautifully for the easy score. The linebacker could not stay with him. And we'll be back with Florida State and Clemson tied. Congratulations to Bobby Bowden, not only for getting a touchdown out of his Seminoles, but he and his wife, Ann, became grandparents again early this morning. Their daughter, Ginger, gave birth to a son in Fort Walton Beach. And the father is John Madden. Now, big fella, don't come off the couch like that. It's not our John Madden. It's another John Madden. In fact, he played for Bobby down at Florida State. He was a center for the Seminoles, and Papa's over there on the sideline right now with Grandpapa. A kind of unusual defense here by Clemson. They don't think Chip Ferguson can scramble much. They play two men at the nose tackle right there to try to create some indecision up front. But here is Dexter Carter, and he's just going to outrun the strong safety, number 39, Arlington Nunn. Left part of the screen. The thing I like about this throw is he was open, and he didn't try to really drill it in there. Just let it, nice, nice easy throw, let it run underneath it. So Florida State will kick it off. 13.46 to go here in the first half. McFadden and Henderson standing back on their own two-yard line. A short kick. They collide. It's down and loose on the fumble. But, but Joe Henderson was able to fall on the loose ball. The two deep men came up and they collided a miscommunication back there is no one called who was to receive it I got it you take it is generally the man on the left side who's got the responsibility of calling it whether he's got it or the man on the far right's going to take it and Clemson's third fumble of the season but they have not lost one yet and their second team turned it over once last week. Well, they've been very tough in not turning the ball over. McFadden stays in as the fullback and pounds right ahead for a couple of yards. Eric Hayes, Eric Hayes number 78, in on that stop. Pat O'Brien, what have you got? Brent, as you know, besides being very wet here, it's also one of the noisiest places in the world. But Bobby Bowden this week took his players onto his field back at Florida State, put a Rolling Stones concert through the loudspeakers. I think it worked. I don't think the noise is bothering him. Let's go back to you. His players are too young to know anything about the Rolling <laughs> Stones. That's your vintage. Williams on the roll, incomplete, ball bounce. Keith Jennings was the intended receiver there, number 87. Good there at Somerville, South Carolina, over toward the East Coast. West Virginia rolling. Look at that scoring machine for Coach Nalen. Temple leading Navy by a field goal at the half. Harvard over Columbia, so the losing streak may continue. Now it is third and seven for the Tigers. Seven man front. They run Henderson and no daylight. Hayes again. Eric Hayes, 78, the first man to get a hand on him. And Danny Ford not happy about three downs and out. The ball control team loves to get you a couple of first downs at least and then punch you back deep in your own territory. Here, Deion Sanders can give the Seminoles another field position opportunity or Florida State can rush the freshman punter. They'll show that 10-man front. High snap brought down, one step and off. Sanders at the 44-yard line, looking for daylight. Slick move. Comes across midfield. Nine-yard return by Deion Sanders, who is one of the best all-around athletes in college sports. Track star, football All-American, and also played great baseball in the Yankee organization. We'll be right back.
it stunned all of us a couple of weeks ago when Miami buried Florida State and we asked the players their thoughts about that night in the Orange Bowl. We came out of the game and you know no one knew what happened really. It was like it was a nightmare for us. Well you know we felt sort of devastated because you know, we were really up for the game and uh, it was a really big game for us. I don't think one person really had a good game against Miami. And you know usually it's one or two guys you know but not the whole team. Embarrassed. We was very embarrassed. Miami embarrassed us that night. It was the better football team tonight. And so here this afternoon in Clemson, the Seminoles determined to gain back some respect. Forget about dreaming again of a national championship. They just want folks to think better of their football program. First and 10 for Florida State. And they're at the Clemson 47. The momentum has changed as Ferguson on the bootleg takes it out of bounds at the 40-yard line on the far side. You know, Brent, I think it's so important for a quarterback to have the support of his coach. And that's what Chip Ferguson's had. He got some criticism after the Miami game. Last week, he threw two interceptions. But yet, Bobby Bowden has been fully behind Chip Ferguson. And Ferguson works his way out of it. It's been largely responsible, I think, giving him the confidence to do that. He handles quarterbacks very well. This morning, Coach Bowden spoke to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes over in Greenville, nearby Clemson. Here's the second down for Florida State. Ferguson keeps it, and this time drops off the pass for a first down to his tight end, Johnson. Beasley comes up to make the hit. Let's get an update from Jim Nance in New York. Take it away, Jim. Well, Brent, this just in. 55 seconds to go. After a block punt, Penn State's Ray Tarassi converts from 38 yards, and the Nittany Lions lead it 23-20 with 50 seconds to go. Back to Brenton Peck. Surprising challenge by Boston College in that one. Penn State hoping to hold on. Jim will have all the details at halftime, of course, with the coach era. First and 10 for Florida State. Ball is inside the Clemson 35-yard line. Sammy Smith checks in. Off the fake, he goes out as a pass receiver. Dumped off incomplete by Ferguson. His receivers were covered, but the first appearance of the afternoon of number 33, Sammy Smith. Ferguson didn't take the sack there. That is what he's been criticized for over the years. He's taken too many sacks, but he dumped the ball off there. Sammy Smith, he is still, even though he's not starting off to a slow start this year, Brent, he is still an important part of this offense because he can go 70 or 80 yards every time he touches the ball. So you still have to find a way to get him the ball. Bennett is the fullback. Set in front of him. Lewis and Anthony, the wide receivers. They show end around, and Lewis is surrounded. Jesse Hatcher, the bandit, and Brewster was there defensively. Jesse Hatcher, number 55, really does his job. He is just going to stay at home. All these guys are. And that's what you have to do against Florida State because the reverse is a regular part of their offense. Watch, four orange jerseys are there. They aren't fooled. That's good discipline defense. Florida State having difficulty again on the ground. Ten carries for four yards is all they've mustered. Their scoring play was the touchdown pass, the long one from Ferguson to Carter. Ferguson looking again to throw out of bounds incomplete Sammy Smith drew double coverage that time from Hatcher and Brewster so that time the bandit dropped off he picked up Sammy Smith and had him well covered and the punting unit comes on to the field for the Seminoles with 1040 to go in the first half we're tied at seven two long scoring passes here so far one off an end around by Clemson. Corlew standing and punting at zone 44. Hangs it high. Wolford will let it go down toward the end zone, and Florida State tries to down it. Oh, it's terrific. Right there at the one yard line. That's fabulous special teams. Leroy Butler was able to down it at the one yard line. Credit him with a 40 yard punt. Clemson in a hole. 
Rodney Williams and the Clemson offense back on their own one yard line. There's a marvelous game within this game. Two great young defensive backs. Deion Sanders of Florida State starting to step up and assume a leadership role. Donnell Wolford of Clemson watching now from the bench over there. But the one thing that Bowden has needed with that defensive unit is leadership on the field. I talked to Bobby this week and that's exactly what Deion has stepped to the forefront to do to lead this defensive team. First and ten and Rodney Williams uh, likes to keep it himself fearful of an exchange fumble down there. They love to run the toss play but you would not expect to see it down here conservatively. They'll try to punch out a first down if they can you would think. Here's a situation where you like to give the ball to your big old fullback Tracy Johnson 230 pounds of them real short legs very difficult to bring down and he's always going forward never going sideways. Williams standing back in his own end zone on second and ten sends Hooper in motion there is the fullback stacked up at the line Florida State pushing him back toward the goal line. Terrific stuff inside by Felton Hayes, number 46, an easy read for him. A lot of Florida State fans have driven up from Tallahassee, and they're right down there and to the quarterback's right. Watch Felton Hayes. He's just going to look right in here at the fullback. That is his key. When the fullback gets the ball, he steps up into the hole. There's a little crease right there. He puts his helmet there and drives Johnson back. He's going to throw on it. He's got the back. Allen out to the 15 for a Clemson first down. Big play. Oh, did that take them out of a hole? And you can say what you want about Rodney Williams, but in big games and big plays when they really need him, he gets the job done. The key really here was the wide receiver, Keith Jennings, took the defensive back inside. Terry Allen had the eye formation, came and swung out behind him, and that put the defensive backs in a bind. A little breathing room for the Tigers. Johnson banging behind the left side of his line and there was Felton Hayes again out of Brandon Florida 6'1 233 pounds. Tracy Johnson is one of those fullbacks again who's not going to run sideways for you. He's only six feet. And he's got thighs like the size of New Hampshire. It's really tough to get your arms around the guy. It is hard to bring down. <laughs> Second and <laughs> New Hampshire. Huh? I don't know where that came from. Back again. Johnson short of a first down, but it will be third and short as the result of that plunge. What's up, Pat O'Brien? Brent, I've been watching feet for you down here. This is what the field looks like on the end, but as you walk out here, it's in pretty good condition. They have sand and a great drainage system here. Nobody's slipping much. Let's go back to you. Pat down there in the right corner of the end zone. Stomping on that moisture down there. It has rained at least a half inch here so far today. Now on the third and short. They fake to the fullback. The toss to Henderson. And the first down for Clemson. A little more daring on two third down plays here in this series by the Tigers. It's the sequencing of plays. It is really moving the chains here for Clemson. This is good hands by Terry Allen because the or Joe Henderson because the ball was out in front of them kept his eye on the ball but they ran the fullback a couple of plays earlier twice then they faked the ball to the fullback pitch it out to Henderson. Oh he has come south from Freehold New Jersey and he has a bright future here in South Carolina. First and ten now for the Tigers. That's Hooper in motion and they toss to Henderson who cuts and tries to turn it upfield may have gotten a yard. That was Stan Shiver who came up and forced the play for the Seminoles. Interesting matchup today. Deion Sanders and the wide receivers for Clemson. This is number 87 Jennings who again he's 6'4", 230. He's trying to screen him at a terrific blocker and really getting in his face. It's a good matchup today. Now second and ten for the Tigers. Williams to the far sideline. 
incomplete. He had him open. He had Gary Cooper wide open, and he overthrew him. What I love about what Clemson is doing, Brent, though, is they're really setting up plays. They threw a short pass a couple times right up. A couple times they ran down here and did this. This time they faked there, and then they went behind him for the deep throw. He was wide open. Watch the pump fake by Williams. This was set up earlier when they ran two of those. The defensive back is clearly food, fooled. He just needed a little bit more air on that ball. Robbie Spector checks in as wide receiver for Clemson. He is down to Williams' left. They throw to Cooper, and Cooper is free at midfield. Deion Sanders, the fastest man on the field, comes over, and the penalty marker comes down on the tackle, which was up at the helmet. throws underneath Sanders. Now Cooper number 25. This should not have been a first down but number two Spectre. Watch the block that he makes on Sanders. That allowed the first down. A terrific block for one wide receiver for Cooper led to the first down. And the penalty will be tacked on because of the face mask penalty. Sanders grabbed a hold of the mass, so the ball will be placed at the 30-yard line, first and 10. Cooper with two receptions for 99 yards, including the touchdown throw from Chip Davis. So the blocking by the Clemson wide receivers becoming a factor in this game. Williams keeps it inside the 25-yard line before he's driven out of bounds on the near side by Smith. No wonder the NFL likes to come in here and take a look at these wide receivers. They do things besides run pass patterns. But it's Chip Davis there in Hooper, number 26. And watch how far long they stay in front of those defensive backs. Most def uh, receivers are kind of wimps. They go there and they try to get in front of the guy, but they come really after him. They get right on their toes and go after him hard. You'd never say that if you were still on the field with the Rams. Spoken by a former quarterback about those wimp receivers. <laughs> Here's the fullback, and Johnson is hammered in the middle by Felton Hayes and Kelvin Smith. South Carolina with the lead, and Oklahoma over Arizona at the half. Iowa now back in a tie with Colorado. The Hawkeyes struggling, and Virginia beating Georgia Tech by a point in an ACC game. Third and short, two yards to go for the Tigers. Johnson and Allen remember where it started back on their own one yard line after that marvelous punt. Williams keeps it for the first down. Dives down close to the 15 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Tigers and what an impressive march. Remember those two huge third down calls though at the beginning of the drive and now another one. The quarterback can beat you with his head just as easily as he can with his arms. This was supposed to be a pitch, but Waggy Williams saw that there was nowhere to go on the pitch, so he kept the ball, do dove upfield for the first down. That's a heads-up play by Williams. Coley the tight end. Jennings out wide to the right. Hooper is to the short side, the other wide receiver. Hooper now comes in motion, so that'll put him in a slot spot to lead the blocking. Allen turns it upfield inside the 15-yard line on the first down pop. Now Clemson has such a nice collection and variety of backs. They can give you Tracy Johnson, the big fullback, right up the middle. Then they'll pitch the ball to Terry Allen, who's a great cutback runner. And then they get the ball to Joe Henderson outside, so they can really mix it up depending upon what backs they give the ball. Magnificent drive, isn't it? Very good sequencing of plays. Mm. This is really textbook football right now on this drive. Inside the 15, this is the 15th play of this drive coming up. Rodney Williams is tripped up. Rodney Williams tried to turn the corner, and number 81, Phil Carollo, out of Melville, New York, tripped him up. There he is, number 81. Here was the play from the half-yard line that kept this drive alive. They would have been forced to punt, but instead they threw to Allen coming out of the backfield and 80 yards later they're down to the Seminoles 15 yard line it's third and six for the Tigers 
Williams. Quick pop. Complete. He hits Hooper inside the 10 yard line. Close to a first down. And terrific. Remember earlier they faked the short pass and one deep on the defensive back. That time he, the defensive back is so concerned now about getting beat deep that he gives him the big cushion. He drills the ball in there for the reception. They'll bring the chains clear across the field to measure here on the near side. Tracy Sanders made a good tackle on that play too. Remember Sanders was concerned about getting beat by because uh, Cooper did it earlier in the game. Gave him some cushion but he did make a nice tackle. That's short. He's been successful on third and short all day long with his fullback. Of course, all the players are telling the coach to go. You know what they're like. They have held the ball for more than seven minutes. Roger Riley, our stats man, tells us it's 719 exactly right now. And we've got 311 left here in the first half and coach Ford elects to use a timeout and bring Rodney Williams over to the sideline. So while we've got a stoppage in play we'll take a break from Clemson South Carolina and we'll be right back with the score tied. Well close by is one of the favorite haunts of Clemson students and Pat O'Brien paid it a visit. And this is the Esso Club and if it looks like a gas station you're right but it is a combination gas station and watering hole. As it turns out, they don't sell gasoline at the Esso Club anymore, but they do sell a whole lot of water. On a big game like today, maybe five, 600 cases. In fact, my friend Chester here says, all they sell here now is beer and sympathy for Florida State. But outside, Florida State got no sympathy as the Letterman's Club collected $2 to hit a car that represented at FSU. And Brent, I don't know how they did this, but I hope you got a ride to the airport. Let's go back to you. <laughs> uh, I think that's one of Brent Musburger's favorite hangouts, too. They better send you that barbecue <laughs> at halftime. <laughs> we, there we go. What a great setting this is uh, in South Carolina, western part of the state, close to the Georgia border. Not far from Greenville, Spartanburg. Great football fans, just as they are down in Tallahassee. They love their teams. Now, third and inches. There's the first down. Johnson from the fullback spot, and the drive continues. 230 pounds of fullback. He's only six feet. He gets great leverage, and again, he's always upfield. Gets a nice block on the outside by his wide receiver, Jennings, and then does the rest himself. Realized he only needed a couple of inches, and when you do that, you give it to the fullback, a guy like Tracy Johnson. Oh, that defense for Florida State's been on the field for a long, long time. First and goal. Williams keeps it. Touchdown, Clemson. Sensational drive, 99 yards for the Tigers. Great play selection. In a drive where Danny Ford's Tigers faced four third downs and one fourth down, and the Tiger will give us 14 push-ups here in Clemson. And if you're thinking about Florida State, still plenty of time, 2.45 left in the half. Florida State has all three of their timeouts, and Chip Ferguson has been pretty hot. The 
controversial figure here in South Carolina throughout much of his career. But this afternoon, Rodney Williams, one of the Tiger heroes. Sile puts the ball on the tee. He'll kick it off. Ross, on his own four-yard line, elects to come out. Ross spins free and is down around the 33-yard line. Well, tomorrow we'll start our NFL coverage at CBS at 12.30 Eastern time. Dick Butkus, Irv Cross, Will McDonough will be along. Irv was out and paid a visit to the Minnesota Vikings. We'll hear from Anthony Carter. They get ready for that big game in Soldier Field and Chicago. And in the late games, the doubleheader game, Dick Butkus was down in Dallas. We'll see that training facility. And the Cowboys coming off a Monday nighter will play the Giants. Meanwhile, the Rams have the Raiders out in the Coliseum. And Michigan opens up with a field goal. So Gillette. One to put them ahead of the top ranked team in the country, and this is Floyd. No daylight. Vance Hammond, number 90, out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, making the stop. Top of the screen, Vance Hammond he is 6'7, 280, and he is a great pass rusher. He's going to again beat the lineman very quickly. Inside stunt. He runs right over Mike Morris, the offensive guard, and makes the tackle. Hammond's a great story. He's been coming to Clemson games his entire life. Well, in that big one up in Fenway Park, it is 3-1, Red Sox over Yankees. That's in the bottom of the eighth inning. And this is Sammy Smith. Mervyn Green leads the defense for the Big Orange. Well, Sammy Smith does not seem just to be running with much confidence. He's a little bit tentative. I think he's one of those running backs that if he gets start quick, starts quickly during a game or during a season, Katie bar the door, look out. But if he starts slowly, he tends not to play well. Uh, here in Clemson, South Carolina, with Pat Hayden and Pat O'Brien, I'm Brent Musburger. The Tigers, the third-ranked team in the nation, leading Florida State 14-7. And the fans, having been notified that Miami has fallen behind by a field goal, starting to pick it up here. And they want this Tiger team to go for the championship. The penalty marker comes down on the far side. That was young freshman Eddie McDaniel coming over there to make the stop. I keep waiting to say old freshman. There must be somebody coming back from the military. You mentioned Eddie McDaniel. He has really been a surprise here for Clemson. He's one of those great athletes where the coaches told me that, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. We don't do much coach with him. We line him up and let him play. Three downs and out. And a timeout is going to be called by Clemson. They want to stop that clock at 110. They want to take a crack at perhaps setting up a field goal opportunity. Potentially a block. And while well, we've got a break, let's take a look at these two fine universities. We're back. Florida State punting. Corlew standing on his own 12-yard line. Wolford, a superb punt returner, ready to see if he can give field position. And the Tigers show that 10-man front. Clemson with one timeout with which to work. And now the official signals that the clock should be started here. 110 and it will be on the snap. Corlew gets it off. Here is Wolford. He'll let it roll. Takes a Florida State bounce. And it's back at the 32. Well, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from both teams. And Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Rodney Williams has 59 seconds to try and get the Tigers into field goal position if he can. And they really need to get 39 or 40 yards to get Gardaki in position to kick a field goal as longest of the year is 46. Cooper, Cooper, and Jennings are out there, the wide receivers, and Williams throws on the run, working the sideline, and Jennings, did he get out of bounds over there? 
And that was Tracy Sanders. Yeah, that's been a great holding match. On. And Brett, that's been a great matchup. Tracy Sanders and Keith Jennings have been going after one another all night. Blocking and with uh, receptions. Penn State with a win. So Penn State and West Virginia are on a collision course in the East, aren't they? Come from behind victory as Boston College had tied it up. Williams again rolling incomplete. Sanders reading it all the way that time. But if Sanders is that tight on him again, they can go for the fake and try to go up top like they did earlier. Well, here comes Davis. An earlier hero in this game when he heaved the touchdown pass to Cooper. He checks in number seven and he'll come to the left side. He will be the slot man. Cooper set outside of him. Jennings working the near side on the third down. Williams close to the first down. It will depend on the spot. I don't think they, I don't think they made it. The clock continues to run inside of 30 seconds. We're not even going to measure. Danny quickly bringing Rodney Williams over here to the sideline as the clock continues to run down. Not close enough for a measurement, so they didn't stop the clock. Ford not wanting the big air made at this moment, content to take a seven-point lead on into the locker room. So we've come to the end of the first half with Clemson leading Florida State 14 to 7. We had two big passing plays. Clemson scoring first. Then Florida State came back to tie it. And a beautiful 99-yard drive. It was set up on third down from the one when Williams hit this critical pass to Allen. Then, 99 yards later, the senior quarterback from Columbia, South Carolina, took it into the end zone, and after the extra point, the Tigers took a seven-point lead on the Seminoles. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. Here in South Carolina, Clemson leading Florida State 14 to 7, the result of a beautiful 99 yard drive led by quarterback Rodney Williams. And Pat Hayden, I think you can identify with the pressures that go on when you're a quarterback, the criticism you receive. What's happening in college football with quarterbacks today? Well, I think one of the disappointing things is college quarterbacks are getting more and more public criticism. A few years ago, that didn't happen. It's getting like the pro scene now. Now, Rodney Williams has received a lot of criticism in his career, but I really admired the guy for having a mental toughness to stick in there. He's not going to throw five touchdowns a game, but he knows how to get his team into the end zone. Now, you mentioned mental toughness, Pat, and in talking to Rodney, he admitted that he wasn't always the best quarterback, but he hung in despite the Sometimes criticism. In the game, I let get a little carried away, whether I, whether it was getting too fired up in certain situations or or letting the crowd get to me, where now I, I try to stay on an even keel, and, and I, think, I think I do a good job of that, and I, I think I keep the offense at a at an even kill and that you know that's my job and I, I try to go out and do it every week. He sure did keep him on an even keel on this drive. He faced three third downs, one fourth down, and he capped it off with that seven yard touchdown run. 14-7 Clemson will continue live right after this message and a word from your local station. Coach Danny Ford stopped the chat with Pat O'Brien. He's ahead, but he's not overly happy. Going your way, are they? Well, I think we gave up a big play defensively on the long pass, and that was my fault. Uh, we put him in a defense we shouldn't have been in. We played pretty well. Uh, the last drive was a big plus for us, and I think the first five minutes coming back in the, in the, in the in the third quarter is going to be very important. They got the football. Our coverage has got to improve. And then they, uh, we got to make something happen early because they, they, they up against the wall and they're going to come out wide open. Weren't you just a little nervous throwing the ball from inside the one on a rainy day? I don't believe they're telling me what they're doing today, so I, that's better off. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Back to you, Brent. <laughs> a man who trusts his assistant coaches. <laughs> so Sile with the ball. He'll put it down on the tee. You can see his toe tied up there. Kickoff fashion. Ross and Carter set to return for the Seminoles. 
Tigers, all orange. They're lucky orange pants. Seminoles wearing the white pants for the first time since 58, courtesy of actor Burt Reynolds. This is Ross. Out to the 25 and down. One statistic leaps off the page. The rushing statistic for Florida State in that first half. That's total yards, 232 to 71, and only one rushing yard for Florida State. Pat the problem. And this is the third game in a row they have not rushed the ball, and it's the interior of the line, the center and the two guards. They're getting no push against this Clemson defense. I think it's tough to be a finesse passing team and a physical running team. They bring Butts in as an added blocker. They've moved him back from the linebacking spot. He'll try to lead Sammy Smith, who cuts away from the block and comes out to the 31-yard line on first down. So they start Butts and Smith, and they'll see if they can generate something in the middle of that offensive line now for Coach Bobby Bowden. Butts and Smith are his power backs, Brent, both of them about 230, 225, and they really want to come out here early, I think, and try to get something established in that running the game because it was just impossible in the first half. O'Malley brought the play in from the sideline. They face a second and four. Smith cuts off to the right side, pushed out of bounds at the 34-yard line, a little short of a first down. You really can't blame some of these running backs because there is no hole for any of these guys to run. That's two games we have seen Florida State, and there isn't a lot of gaping holes. No one blocked Beasley, number 27, there. There's just nowhere for Sammy Smith to go. You know, frequently we focus on the backs, but it depends upon the offensive line receive enough credit for a winning football team and sometimes they escape the blame. This is third and one. Williams in at fullback. O'Malley in motion to lead the fullback straight ahead and the defense was ready for him. Great defensive stand that time. Otis Moore, number 81, got underneath. That's a big play by the Clemson defense. Your defensive team sets the tone on the first series in the second half. Again, terrific penetration. Dane Williams is a good uh, short uh, yardage runner, but again, just no crease there for Williams to find. And the Seminoles still considering what to do. They've got Corlew on the far side, and they're going to go to a timeout. So we've got a timeout. It is fourth and short. We'll be right back. After a conference, the coaching staff decided to punt. Tim Corlew standing on his own 20-yard line. Fourth and short. Donnell Wolford standing on his 31-yard line. Moving up to about the 32 or 3. Ready to return for the Tigers. Low snap. Fielded. High. Wolford at the 31. Down right there with a penalty marker thrown. 34-yard punt. And the penalty flag thrown as Wolford was being hit and down at the 30-yard line. And for the next couple of weeks here on the clip, and a very late clip trying to free him mistake by the Tigers started to say for the next couple of weeks we're really going to focus here at CBS on the Southeastern Conference race that features some great teams Auburn hoping to win a national championship will host Tennessee and then in two weeks we'll send LSU down to Gainesville where they will play Florida so check in on the Southeastern Conference the next couple of weeks Pat I'm sorry I can't be with you in Auburn I've got to go to Miami of Ohio to watch him play Cincinnati but I know you'll be in good hands <laughs> forward to it. Reggie Slack, the quarterback there at Auburn, is off to a good start. First and ten. Williams with the Tigers at the line of scrimmage. After the penalty, the ball was back on the 15. This is Henderson. He squeezed about four yards out. Well, Clemson really likes to run the ball in between the tackles, and particularly right up the middle of the field. And when you have a, as good an offensive center in Jeff Back as they do, that's where you're going to feature them. And a fullback like Tracy Johnson, they're going right at the heart of the Florida State defense. Clemson scored first on a 61-yard pass from a wide receiver to Cooper. Davis threw it. 
Then 40 yards for Florida State on a pass from Ferguson to Dexter Carter coming out of the backfield. Then it was the 99-yard drive. Here's the late pitch, and this is Henderson. Forced out of bounds at the 30-yard line. First down for the Tigers, a 12-yard run. Just before the half, Clemson marched 99 yards, and Williams scored from seven yards out. You know, Brent, I think the difference between these two offensive teams, I think Clemson has an identity. They know they're going to come out here and run the ball at you inside and then run the option. Florida State just doesn't seem to be able to make up the mind whether they're trying to be a throwing team or a passing team. First and ten for that Clemson bunch, ranked number three by the AP. Has been all season. Hooper in motion. Here's Henderson off that toss, turns it upfield and gets across the 35. Second and short. Second and short, just as you said, that is the key. Clemson is averaging over seven yards on first down. And again, that's the perfect kind of game Clemson wants to play. Keep the defense on the field because it takes about twice as much energy to play defense as it does offense. Play is brought in by a wide receiver. Hooper and Jennings. Jennings slotted to the right side. Now comes in motion behind Williams. Keeps it. Pitches to Henderson. There's an alley open. And he's forced out by Leroy Butler. And a penalty marker is down. That was a 22-yard burst by Henderson. And great ball handling by Rodney Williams. And I think they called the clip on number 87, Keith Jennings, the wide receiver who has blocked so well tonight. He blocked well there, but he got a little bit low, and on the backside of the defensive back, the official was there to make the clip call. Clip it! Offensive team! That's six total penalties for 65 yards by Clemson so far in this game. They've hurt themselves with penalties. And you see Jennings, number 87, actually pushed the man. It wasn't much of a cause, kind of a ticky-tack call, but he did push him. The fish was there for the uh, penalty. See, Jennings will tell him during the film session, I told you, Coach, us wide receivers shouldn't be blocking that much. <laughs> yeah, throw us the ball a little bit more. I'm wide open. If they you have not that. seen them, the wide receivers on this Clemson team really block downfield. They go after the corners and the safety. Williams to throw it. Allen throws a good block. Down the middle, and it's incomplete. And the receiver looking for interference. Jennings thought that Tracy Sanders interfered with him, but he did not. Sanders and Jennings have had a battle all afternoon. It's a classic one. And I think Sanders has done a pretty nice job of both shedding Jennings and trying to tackle the ball and defending him. Five-man defensive line for Florida State here. They should get more pressure on the quarterback because they're one-on-one -on -one outside. And Tracy Sanders does a nice job on Jennings. Vocally disagreeing was Coach Ford. He thought it was interference all the way. Now, third and nine. Williams back. Incomplete. The ball was deflected. Allen coming underneath, and the crowd continues to boo the absence of an interference call. But Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles will take it. Deion Sanders will go back and set to return this punt. And again, Clemson must be mindful of an opportunity here to block a punt. However, it's a one-step punter, and Chris Gardaki has gotten it off. The young man from Stone Mountain, Georgia. You're going to hear a lot from him. He'll be a field goal kicker as well as a punter here. He whacks it, and now it'll be Deion Sanders from the 24. In the middle, twists his way, finds an alley. Now it's just the punter he'll outrun it. It's going to be a touchdown, Florida State. Deion Sanders. There are no penalty markers down. An electrifying 76-yard run. Deion Sanders stuns this crowd of 80,000 in Death Valley. With an attempt to tie it. Did you see that speed as the extra point is beautiful? 
I want you to watch this at normal speed. He comes into the middle. Just a little bit of a crack, a seam, he kind of slides through, and then he explodes. We're talking about 4-2-1, world-class speed. That was the timing by the Pro Scouts last spring. What a run by Sanders. We'll be right back. Deion Sanders has tied it 76 yards. What set it up, Pat? The key block right here by number 15, Bill Raggins. But good punt returners just need one or two blocks, and they've got great vision. Watch Raggins there. Just gets in the way. They're not a fierce block, but just gets in the defender's way enough. And the great eyes of Deion Sanders, and then it's the speed. I like to be a kicker back there trying to tackle him. I always like to be a catcher trying to throw him out stealing <laughs> second base. You know, he rose to AAA with the uh, New York Yankees. Down to Pat O'Brien. All right, Brent, one of the happiest men in the South right here, Deion Sanders, getting congratulations from his teammates. I said, you know, what was it like? He said, Pat, it's prime time and about time. <laughs> so back to you. <laughs> Tell him I like it because we said it was darkness in Miami yeah. for prime time, so he comes out into the sunlight. Nice run, Deion. folks down in Tallahassee that love you right now. He has scored consecutive weeks. Last week, he ran back an interception for a touchdown. I think what differentiates him, Brent, is some guys just want to be one of the best. Deion Sanders wants to be the best defensive back in football. What was it Muhammad Ali said? It ain't bragging if you can back it up. So now Andrews with the ball on the tee. We've got a new game again with Henderson and McFadden back. They're number one, leading by a point. Two field goals for the Wolverines. And out of bounds and a five-yard penalty, and they will re-kick it. A reminder tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time. The NFL today will start off our coverage. Minnesota-Chicago, the big early game. Philadelphia plays Washington. That will be a fascinating confrontation. How good is Buddy Ryan's team this year? Then late, the doubleheader action on CBS. Giants, Cowboys, Rams, Raiders, Falcons, 49ers. So check the local listings for the game and time in your area. And Bobby Bowden has had two big plays in this game. His quarterback, Ferguson, went to Carter for 40 yards. And now his best athlete, Deion Sanders, explodes 76 yards for a touchdown. Illinois leading Utah and Florida over Indiana State. You know, in two weeks, Florida and LSU could well be unbeaten in that confrontation down in Gainesville. We'll look forward to seeing you there, Brent. So they'll re-kick it from the 30-yard line. Never done a game down in Gainesville. I'm really looking forward to it. Some of the turf starting to come up now after the hard rain and the play in the first half. From the ground, Henderson runs it down at the 10. Broke a tackle. And he is down at the 24-yard line where it will be first down. Here's how the scoring has gone so far in this game. Clemson struck first on the big play, 61 yards. Cooper scored it. They passed off the end around. Davis threw it to him. Then it was the big play for the Seminoles as Ferguson hit Carter. That was 40 yards. Then a brilliant 99-yard drive at the end of the second quarter, and it was 14-7 Clemson. Now another big play. That punt return by Sanders, 76 yards, tied at 14. Williams with Johnson behind him. Hooper going in motion. Allen is the tailback, and they pound straight ahead, and that time Odell Higgins was this ready along with Sanders who came up, and uh, Sanders was over on the side, and now he's coming into the game. Brett, this is a big series for the Clemson offense here. Again, after a big play where your defense forces the team to punt and they return it back, it's up to Rodney Williams to find a way to get a couple of first downs to keep the chains moving. Williams keeps it. Here's the pitch now to Allen. Tripped up. He got across the 30-yard line to the 31. That was Felton Hayes who tripped him up. I've really been impressed with the way Rodney Williams has pitched the ball today, Brent. You know, it's, it looks like an easy little toss, but it's just as delicate and I think as difficult as throwing the ball downfield with a pass. But every, just about every pitch has been right out in front of the running back has allowed him to catch it on the run and pick up some yardage. Third and 
short. Timeout called by Williams. He did not like the defensive front. Saw something which bothered him because of the play call. So he'll come over to Coach Ford's sideline. He'll put on the headset and check with the assistant coaches upstairs, and we'll be right back. Put his finger on it. The Gators have not played tough schedule, but in two weeks, you'll see them against LSU. We focus on the Southeastern Conference the next two weeks. Here it is, Clemson and Florida State tied at 14. Williams kept it, didn't fool Phil Carollo. Number 81 has made a couple of big plays here this afternoon for Florida State. So the timeout was wasted. And now it will be the putter. Clemson, Chris Gardaki on the field. The freshman who has been their field goal specialist has handled the punting all the way and Florida State cannot get to the one-step punter at least so far. They are the best school in the country at blocking punts. Gardaki gets this one off in the teeth of a rush and here's Sanders. Made the catch at the 23-yard line. Went for the fair catch that time. The crowd is claiming Gardaki was, uh, was roughed, and he thought he was as well. You know, he gave it a little Lawrence Olivier. Wow. That may get him an Oscar. Well, he's a, he's a freshman, and <laughs> by the time he's a junior, he'll learn that you've got to fall immediately. You can't, you can't have that delayed... Boy, that was bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Temple leading Navy. Florida State comes to work with a score tie. Floyd is in front of Sammy Smith. Lewis goes in motion for the Seminoles. Ferguson off the fake. Rolling to the right. Throws deep for Floyd. He's got it. Into Clemson territory to the 42-yard line. A 34-yard gain. A first down pass. Beasley caught him. When you give Chip Ferguson protection, he is a very accurate quarterback. Again, the play-action fake. Victor Floyd lined up at fullback and get lost in the shuffle with the play-action fake. And then right down the sideline over the strong safety, Beasley, beautifully thrown by Ferguson. The momentum is really switched to Florida State. Sanders did it with that punt return. Tying the score. Now Williams and Smith split back behind Ferguson. Ferguson going to throw again on first down. He has time. He hits Anthony in the middle. Fumble. Clemson ball. Raymond Chaffetz recovers for the Tigers. The first turnover, and it's a costly one. But it's the 12th of the year, and this is what has plagued. Oh, the official has given it to. He's changed his mind. Wait a minute. They have changed their mind. It has gone back. I thought Chavis had recovered it as well. He had recovered it, and they took it away from him underneath. Good protection again for Ferguson, who is very confident right now. Terry Anthony turns it upfield. The ball pops loose clearly there. And you can't really tell. So a first down and a big break for the Seminoles. Smith comes right back. Battles inside the 30-yard line on first down. Wolford making the stop. Chip Ferguson is a very confident quarterback right now, and you have to be careful of a confident quarterback who is hot. A good first-yard game. Ford still upset. Williams the fullback. O'Malley the tight end. Smith the tailback. Anthony is out of the game right now. Here is Smith. Penalty marker is down. Smith was short of the first down. Here's another look at that fumble where they sort this thing out. And Anthony goes down the ball, stripped. That's good defense. They were trying to strip that ball. Number 79 on red. Looks like he's going to recover it right there. He's on top of it. It must have been just been taken away by the offensive player from Florida State. 
Chavis was definitely the first one there. Oh, the penalty being marked previous against the Seminoles. A costly holding penalty against them. It'll bring that ball back to the Clemson 38-yard line. The Yankees could have used Deion Sanders this afternoon. Yeah, he had a good summer for him. Goes all the way to the Triple A. Now on second and 13. Ferguson back. Throwing deep. And a beautiful catch at the one yard line. A brilliant catch. Bruce Lazane makes the grab a 36 yard pass play. throw and it was well covered by Deno Wolford but you know what I like receiver Lassane is 6'4 Ferguson knows that he throws it high lets him go up for a moment I thought Wolford was going to intercept it but then Lassane just pulled it right away from him but anytime you have a tall receiver get it up there and give him a chance to go up and get it first and goal for the Seminoles Williams and Smith in the backfield Three tight ends, power eye. Williams, touchdown, Seminoles lead. With eight minutes and 27 seconds to go in the third period, Florida State takes its first lead of the afternoon. Deion Sanders returns a punt for a touchdown. Then Florida State, after a punt, moves back down the field for the go-ahead touchdown. Now it'll be up to Andrews. He adds the extra point. Sensational catch by Lassane really set up the touchdown. He's playing against an All-American and Donald Wolford, and Wolford covers him extremely well. I think the underthrown deep ball right there is one of the great throws in football. Lassane uses all of his height to go up and get it. And then he, they give it to the big fullback, Dane Williams. He scored 15 of these short yardage touchdowns a year ago. He's got a nose to the end zone. Just bowls his way over the left guard of uh, Tony Yeomans. And a block by the tight end lined up in the black backfield cleared the way for Dane Williams. So Bruce Lassane from Wildwood, Florida. Sets it up with a spectacular catch. He's 6'4", 210 pounds. He replaced Anthony after Anthony fumbled the ball away. The ability of the Seminoles to go back inside that pile and grab that loose ball is what saved this touchdown. They didn't quit going after the fumble. And Brent, I think Bobby Bowden is finding something out about this Florida State team is they're going to be a passing team, not a running team this year. Down to Pat O'Brien. And the key man in that series right here, Terry Anthony, he's the man who had the ball inside, fumbled it, and got his own fumble back. So he's the man smiling right now. Let's go back to Brent. He's saying hi to Mom, too, by the way. I'll say he's a happy man right now. He'd have been under fire if that ball would have been lost. Instead, he went back and he took it away from Chaffetz down underneath. Ferguson now 9 of 12 for 150 yards and one touchdown. 21-14, Florida State leading at Clemson. Another touchdown for number one ranked Miami. They lead Michigan 14-6. That's two field goals for the Wolverines in that game. And here, number three, Clemson, has fallen behind by seven points. Number two, UCLA, plays Long Beach State later tonight. Andrews pulls it deep, and Henderson feels it inside the five, and he'll come out. Hammered at the 21-yard line for an update. Let's find out about that Miami game. And here's Jim Nance in New York. Well, Brent, that was Cleveland Gary scoring his second touchdown of the game. 3.30 left before halftime. It's 14-6, Miami over Michigan. Looks like Colorado is going to win at Iowa. Iowa turned it over on the 15-yard line of the Buffaloes. Looked like they were going to put the game away. Back marching 85-yard come the Buffaloes. Quarterback Salvanesi from a yard out for the touchdown to go ahead. They have just intercepted uh, Chuck Hartley. One minute to go. Buffaloes have the ball and the lead. Back to Brent and Pat. 
All right, Jim, thank you. Here it's 21-14. Florida State with its first lead, scoring moments ago. This is Johnson, the fullback, and he powers his way out to the 25 for Clemson on first down. You're going to see a very patient Clemson offense again here, trying to get themselves down in that third and two situation, and that's where they've broken most of their big plays offensively. They get in third and two, run the option, get to the corner, and pick up 10, 12 yards. Well, it's 5 o'clock Eastern time, and we welcome you to Clemson, South Carolina. 7.55 to go in the third with Pat Hayden and Pat O'Brien. I'm Brent Musburger. The Tigers of Clemson with the ball. Second down and long. They trail the Seminoles 21 to 14. There is the late pitch to the tailback. Forced out of bounds here on the near side. Allen was the ball carrier. Derek Dodge got it. In case you are wondering about the weather conditions and the somewhat slippery surface, a little torn up, it rained hard in this area all morning long. Over a half inch fell in this area. Half, half it has not rained, but the field is torn up a little bit. But if you watch Deion Sanders return that punt, you would think it's a perfect field this afternoon. It was an electrifying punt return, and it turned this game completely around. Now on third and two for Clemson. Williams to throw. Incomplete. And where's the penalty? There it is. Sanders was holding Hooper that time. It's Tracy Sanders, not Deion. And although he, he, there was clearly interference there, Tracy Sanders has played well all afternoon. This time he gets a little bit too aggressive. I think he's expecting the ball to get there a little bit quicker than it does, and that's why he puts the early move and almost tackles the receiver. <laughs> that's a good receiver. He's calling for the flag before he even goes down. He must practice that one. He's got 11 tackles on the day. The ball on the Clemson 37-yard line. First and ten Tigers. Seminoles with a four-man defensive front. Williams slips, gets back up, down the middle, incomplete, and that was Butler defending it for Florida State. Strong defensive effort here in the second half. I think it really were, were ignited by Sanders' punt return, and it's a much different attitude, I think, I'm seeing by, this, by the Florida State defense here in the second half. Purdue leading Ohio. Pennsylvania over Dartmouth. And UTEP beating BYU by 10 points in the fourth. BYU coming off that impressive showing against Texas. Second and 10 for Clemson. Jennings is set to the near side wide. And they run Allen. It'll be third and almost seven for a first down. The man who fired up this defense, Deion Sanders. Absolutely. Punt return did it. He's played pretty well defensively as well. They just don't throw many balls to him. When you play on the opposite side like Tracy Sanders does, he's going to see most of the action. Brent, this is a draw down for Clemson. On third and six and seven, when they play it close to the best, they like to run the draw. Allen is the tailback. And this time they'll throw off it. Incomplete. Clemson must punt. And the game has turned completely around. And I think college football, even more than professional football, is a game of momentum, particularly when you get into a, a park slot like you do in college football. And the momentum right now is all on the side of Florida State. Williams this half is 0 for 4. Donkey's average. Sanders lets this one fall short, and it'll roll inside the 20-yard line. Takes a Clemson roll. It'll be downed at the 18-yard line. Well, let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Awards to those players who have been singled out by the coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the area of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Ty Granger from Clemson, an accounting major from Easley, South Carolina, and Ronald Lewis from Florida State. He's a communications major from Jacksonville, Florida. Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. And congratulations to both of those fine young men. 
first and ten for Florida State. They lead it 21 to 14. We're in the third quarter. Ferguson throwing on first down. That has been a big change. O'Malley, the receiver, and he gets a good gain on first down for the Seminoles. I think we're Florida State is finding out a lot about themselves. They're not going to be a running team, I don't think, this year. But they can pass block very, very well. They have some big old hosses up front. Good protection there for Ferguson. And this is the kind of a team I think they're going to have to be a finesse and passing football team. They have featured the pass on first down here, primarily in the second half. They show into round. Smith keeps it. And he is belted short at the first down. Doug Brewster, number 92 from Athens, Georgia, led the defense that time. Stanford runs it up on San Diego State. And Houston over Missouri. Houston looming as a power in the Southwest Conference. Texas A&M did not play today. That game with Alabama called off because of the weather. Wyoming over Louisiana Tech. The only problem with being a passing team like Florida State is, is trying to get third and short yardage like they're faced with right here. They have not had a first down rushing today. Ferguson's bootleg to throw. First down. Went to his tight end, Johnson. A 12-yard gain and a well-executed play. Throwing to the tight end off the bootleg. Johnson unhappy because he lost his footing when he got over there to the far side. Wonderful call because it really gave Florida State two options. I think Ferguson could have run for the first down, but he found his tight end wide open and dumped it to him. Ball it near the Florida State 40-yard line. This is Smith, big hole in the middle. Well, let's get an Iowa final. Let's check in with Jim Nance. Jim, what happened to the Hawkeyes? Well, Brent, it just turned final at Iowa City. Colorado has beaten the Hawkeyes 24-21. In the second half, Chuck Hartley fumbled twice. He was also intercepted. And now Hayden Fry's team drops to 1-2 and two on the year. Has to be the most disappointing story early in this college football season. Back to Brent and Pat. Yeah, that in Tennessee, Jim, as uh, Iowa falls completely out of the top 20. Second and five here for Florida State. Ferguson rolling under pressure. Throws incomplete. Wolford had Dossey covered that time. And John Johnson, number 12, the blitzing linebacker, was applying the pressure. This Clemson defense really knows how to do that. They did a great job of getting linebackers off the corner upfield. So any time you're going to try a wag or a bootleg like that, most times, if they get rid of one block, they're going to be in the quarterback's face. That was Ferguson's first incompletion of the half. He completed his first five here. As the Seminoles take their first lead, 21-14. Now they come up with the third down. Ferguson fires. First down to O'Malley. Young man from Darien, Connecticut, who played on the same team with the Clemson center, Jeff Back. That's incredible to me. Two guys from Darien, Connecticut. I thought everybody from Darien were quarterbacks, but these guys actually get their uniforms dirty and they bleed and everything. That quarterbacks are soccer players. <laughs> <laughs> really? How do they get a tight end and a center out of Darien? Well, Jeff telling us yesterday he came down to uh, Coach Ford's camp, yeah. but he liked it down here. Yeah. Yeah. Two that got away from Joe Paterno. Ferguson on first down, fires complete to Carter. Carter slips free for another first down, and now this Florida State passing attack starting to show its domination. That a 16-yard gain. Earlier, those two hooked up for a long touchdown of 40 yards. And this is really what we expected from Florida State, really to be able to get the ball downfield, and I think you got to give Bobby Bowden and his staff some credit. They decided, hey, we can't run the football for whatever reason, so we're just going to throw it. Here comes the old run and shoot. <laughs> Fun for the fans. First down for the Knowles. Ball inside the Clemson 30-yard line. Ferguson straight back. Fires to Lewis, who cuts inside down at the 14-yard line. 
suddenly it's a bit of a passing clinic. 15 yards. Well, you know, it's interesting. Clemson, who plays in the ACC, doesn't see the kind of routes that Florida State throws very much. Combo route, the man in motion you're going to see here come out here, and Lewis runs the slant pattern. It is read beautifully by Chip Ferguson. Clemson doesn't see these kind of routes much in the ACC. It's a little bit different for them. Well executed. Clemson unable to exert pressure on the quarterback. That has been a big problem here so far for Clemson. Now they run Smith straight ahead, and he has stood up. Vance Hammond, number 90, from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Now think back to Florida State's first two games, Miami and even Southern Mississippi. They blitzed one time after another defensively. But here so far, Danny Ford's team has been more content to sit back than to send the blitzers after the quarterback. And I think the reason for that, Brent, is because Florida State is throwing the ball off a three-step drop, and it's tough to get to a quarterback even when you're blitzing and he's only throwing it on a three-step drop. He brings it up. Second down and eight. They can get a first down inside the five. Off a fake. They swing it outside to Williams, the fullback. And he is down at the eight-yard line. Beasley bringing him down for Coach Ford. That's pretty good defense because that play was well set up. I thought Dane Williams was going to had a chance to score on that one. The four or five orange jerseys rallied to the ball. Floyd and O'Malley check in for the Seminoles. Lewis also in the game, one of the wide receivers, and Lazane, who made that brilliant catch earlier. Lazane to the short side. Smith and Floyd, the running back. Ferguson over the middle, almost intercepted. Vince Taylor, the linebacker from Clearwater, Florida, getting back and defending that pass over the middle. But I think Vince Taylor was actually hiding behind their official, and I don't think Chip Ferguson sees him. See the official right there? Taylor gets behind him, and I don't think Ferguson ever sees him. He has to duck, and there is Taylor right there in the way, but the official blocked the view. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt by Andrews, looking for his first field goal of the season. And it was partially blocked. Partially blocked, and Andrews now 0 for 3 on the season. A big turnabout in this game. come up with a great special teams play and I think it was number five James Lotto actually got his hand on the ball from the corner bottom of the screen I think he comes from number five this is all determination and Lott is there to tip the ball that's a great James play Lott in that defensive secondary a veteran unit they've been carved up a bit by Ferguson in the second half but there, Lott came up with a big play. First and ten for Rodney Williams and the Tigers. This is Henderson looking for daylight, and it was not there. The Seminole defense ganged up on him. Felton Hayes, 46, helping to lead the way. It's incredible, I think, that Florida State defense has played this well in the second half because they have been on the field a long time. They're playing in a very hostile place, and that time they absolutely stuffed Clemson's best play this week. McFadden is the fullback. Henderson, the tailback. Three wide receivers. Williams wanted Cooper, and it was dropped over here. Ball was thrown low. Let's get an update on the Wolverines and the Hurricanes. Here's Jim Nance. Jim? Well, Brent, a touchdown for the Wolverines. Quarterback Mike Taylor to Jeff Brown, five-yard touchdown. The two-point conversion failed. It's 14-12 Hurricanes with a minute to go in the first half. Back to Death Valley. So number one, feeling some pressure up in Ann Arbor, a two-point game. And Clemson being shut down by this Seminole defense. Only 47 total yards for the Tigers in this half. Williams. Throws to the far side. Cooper going up. Can't hold on. It's incomplete. That was Leroy Butler. Number six. 
He's that, out of Jacksonville. And that's a great play because that ball was caught by Cooper. He made a super catch and adjustment on the ball. But Butler waited, and when he caught it, then he just knocked it right out of his hands. He waits, then he knocks it out. That's terrific defense. 21-14, Florida State leading. Clemson being forced to punt again, and the freshman Chris Gardaki standing near his own five-yard line. Deion Sanders set the return. Sanders driven back inside the 35. Let's it bounce dead, and there is a penalty flag. They did rough the freshman punter this time. He got off a 51-yarder, and he drew the roughing penalty. I think it's number 40, David Bassett. And he got blocked into him, but that is still a penalty in college football. When you get blocked into the punter in college football, unlike the pros, that is still a penalty. Did a little better jo job of acting that time, too, Brent. Five-yard penalty declined. We'll have a first down. Now, the roughing the kicker penalty is declined. Now, let me explain that to you because many of you think that it's an automatic first down. That is not so in college football under that penalty call. It's a run. There's a difference between running into the kicker and roughing the kicker. Running into the kicker, which they called, is only five yards, and roughing the kicker is a first down. Now, that would not have given Clemson a first down. It was a brilliant 50-yard punt. So they took the punt. Florida State will put it in play, first and 10, on their own 29-yard line. And that's how that sequence unfolded, so I don't think anybody made a mistake in declining it. The give to the tailback, and no daylight that time. Jesse Hatcher, the bandit linebacker, number 55, he helped lead the defensive charge against Smith. Watch how they swarm to the ball. And because they substitute so many players on defense, they can do this in the fourth quarter. That's why they think they, they win a lot of games, because they substitute so much. One of the things that Florida State has done so far today is to protect the ball. They have not turned it over once. They appeared to, as LSU hands Tennessee its third straight defeat. West Virginia rolls. Penn State in dramatic fashion and a timeout call by Ferguson. Wow, that's, that's surprising in a, in a close ball game. I think he was worried about the 25 second clock. But he only has one remaining for the fourth, fourth quarter. Generally, coaches tell their quarterbacks to do that in the first half. They don't care, but in the second half, they like to preserve them when you're in a tight game. Down to Pat O'Brien. That one you got. Brent, you know there's more than one way to watch a college football game. Watch it on the field like us or in the stands. Here at Clemson, they have 108 skyboxes, more than any American university. And up there, they have 22 seats in each one, stereo, kitchen service, maid service. I don't think I had that when I was watching the Coyotes play in South Dakota. They're so nice, I go back and watch the NFL today on Sunday. <laughs> back to you. <laughs> there's the revenue, Pat, from those uh, skyboxes. 1.2 million they take in down here. Auburn, where you'll be next week. Pat, they're second. You know, Coach Ford and Pat Dye have a connection. Coach Ford played at Alabama, and Pat Dye was an assistant coach over there, and uh, Coach Ford and his wife used to be the babysitter for the Dye children. Coach Ford said that's the first time I ever saw silk sheets was over <laughs> Coach Dye's head. So here it is with eight seconds left in the third quarter. After the timeout, Ferguson straight back as time hits Floyd and it'll be third and maybe five yards as we come to the end of an exciting third quarter Florida State takes charge here in Death Valley 21 to 14 and we'll return after this message and a word from your local station CBS Sports presents college football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by the insurance companies of the Kemper Group and the independent agents who represent them. Trailing 14-7 at the half, Florida State scores two touchdowns in the third quarter to take the lead. And this summary will show you how they got there. Sanders electrifying punt return set it up and in the third quarter Florida State completely dominated Clemson here it will be a third down coming up for the Seminoles as we start the final 
15 minutes. Six yards needed for the first down. They must get to the 39. Ferguson has been brilliant here so far in the second half. And this is Floyd off the draw. He gets the first down. Gets across the 40-yard line, and it'll be first and 10 for the Seminoles. And if you're going to run the football the way Florida State is playing offense, it has to be off the draw play. Terrific call because they've been burning them with the pass. It's third and six. Everybody on defense is thinking pass. And watch number 27, Floyd, who does a nice job of, of making really about eight-yard run of, out of what I thought was going to be five yards. Good vision as he picks up a couple of blocks. How important is this quarter to Clemson? Take a turn back to the top of the broadcast when Eric Carsegan said Clemson could not win a national championship if they lose today. Everything is on the line. Floyd is jarred by Lott near the 40-yard line in the line of scrimmage. Number one, under pressure. Jim Nance, what's happening in Ann Arbor? Well, they've gone to halftime at Michigan, but not before the Wolverines score again. Two touchdowns within 35 seconds. We told you about the last touchdown. Miami fumbled the ensuing kickoff. Then Taylor found John Colasar 18 yards out for a touchdown. Added a two-point conversion. Halftime, Wolverines lead number one Miami. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Jim, so this quarter looms even bigger as far as Clemson's title aspirations are concerned. Should Miami stumble? Now Ferguson from the pocket throws and another great catch by Lazane. What an afternoon he has had. The 6-4 wide receiver getting up for his second brilliant catch. That's 23 yards. And a heady throw by Ferguson. You throw it away from the defender, and you throw it up in the air and give him a chance to go get it. Corner out one of the safest routes in football, I think, and that's a well-executed play. Chip Ferguson, who played high school ball not far from here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Said he used to come to Death Valley and watch the Tigers as a youngster. Look forward to this return home here this afternoon. He's having a splendid second half. Boy, I look at the top ten, and two of the top five are trailing right now. Miami, number one, is behind Michigan at the half. Number two, UCLA takes on Long Beach State. Clemson trailing here this afternoon in the fourth. Oklahoma winning its game, and they could jump up. USC idle. They'll play Oklahoma in a big win next week. Then it's Auburn. We'll check in on them next week. How good are they? Auburn and Georgia of the Southeastern Conference. Notre Dame a winner. They could bounce up. LSU continues to roll. And now Florida State can hop back up. So the ratings will take another turn today. Diving try by Lazane. Incomplete. And that's one of those throws when you're a quarterback you just absolutely love to have back because Lassane was running wide open down the sideline. Just not enough air on this ball. You don't see many defenders around him. Had beaten Lot by about five yards. So it's third down and ten. And if Ferguson has been the leading pitcher, then the leading catcher here this afternoon has been Lassane. Number 88. Great target. 6-4. Now it's third and ten. O'Malley in motion. Quick drop. Throws to his running back. And there is a penalty marker down. It'll be the holding call against the Seminoles. That's a funny call on third and ten. I can see that to get you five yards, but not ten yards when you throw to the back there in the flat against that kind of coverage. So it'll be marked off against the Seminoles here. I've got Holden on the offensive team grabbing the jersey, a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down, repeat. <laughs> they did hold that Tiger that time. Yeah. My kids are going to want me to bring one of those home, those Tigers. Are. There's the stat that tells you what's happened this half so far. It's third and 20. Ferguson for Lassane, who slipped down, colliding with Lott, and now a penalty flag comes in. Lott and Lassane colliding inside the 10-yard line. The rule reads that.
that you can't have the intent to impede the receiver as he's trying to catch it. Offensive pass interference. Lassane pushing off against Lott inside the 10 yard line. So two big penalties against Florida State back to back. Pat. Looks like Lassane runs right up the back of number five James Lott. And then pushed him back down with his uh, left arm. That's what the official called. The back judge called that one. The ball is being marked back on the Florida State 40-yard line. Fourth down and Corlew to punt. So two costly penalties. Clemson shows a 10-man front. Wolford standing near his 25-yard line set to return. Wolford coming to the near side. It goes out of bounds. It was not a good punt. It's being marked at the 35-yard line. Only a 25-yard punt. Another break for Clemson. Can they capitalize? We'll be right back. A place every college football fan should attend just once. Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. Look at that sea of orange. We've got more than 80,000 here this Saturday. You think how big this community is? It's only 8,100. It swells a little bit on football Saturdays. Auburn next week will have the same kind of a turnout for Tennessee. Look at what Penn State does. Georgia, Texas A&M. All areas where fans really adore their college football. Here it is Clemson with a first and 10. Ball on their own 35-yard line. Coley the tight end. Moving strong to the right side, and they pound Johnson the fullback, and a great second effort by Tracy Johnson out to the 42-yard line. That's a terrific run. That is all Tracy Johnson because there wasn't much there, and he just kept driving. Again, there is no, nothing but north and south out of Tracy Johnson. Just kind of tries to hug the offensive lineman, get him behind him to scratch, claws, and bites, and picks up six yards. Now, the passing game has not worked, and Clemson and Danny Ford may want to turn this attack over to the offensive line. They batter the fullback straight ahead, and it'll be third and short. Coming up with Odell Higgins, the nose man for Florida State, bringing him down. So Rutgers loses to a team from the Southeastern Conference. Yale and Brown wind up with an Ivy League tie. And Princeton beats Cornell. This is a situation that Clemson has run the option very well here this afternoon. Jennings coming in motion. Johnson again breaks free for the first down. It's out to the 47-yard line. First down for the Tigers. Tracy Johnson is one of those guys you have to get down by the ankles because his thighs, from the knee up, he is just so thick, you can't get your arms around him. He just sheds people. Look at that. Again, just tremendous determination. He knows he needs three yards. He does all he has to do to get it. He's rushed 13 times for 45 yards here this afternoon. Cooper and Cooper, the wide men. Anderson the tailback. Williams to throw it. Now he kind of laterals it off. Not a wise decision by the quarterback because he pitched it behind Henderson, who had broken up field, and it'll leave Clemson with a second and ten. Let's check in quickly with Jim Nance. Jim, what do you got? Well, Brent, there's a big game in the whack, and BYU has come back from 10 down to take the lead behind a freshman quarterback, Ty Detmer. Here he hits Fred Whittingham. Cougars lead with two minutes to go, but UTEP's driving inside the BYU 30. Let's go back to Clemson. Sometimes you think Lavelle Edwards has about a half dozen receivers downfield. Second and 10 for the Tigers. Ball on their own 47. Hooper goes in motion. Williams to Henderson, and Henderson pounds to midfield. But this will be third and long for Clemson because first down was unsuccessful. And there is a late penalty flag coming downfield. A defensive back and a wide receiver, Deion Sanders and Jennings, were involved down around the 30-yard line, and that's what this conference is all about. They've been going out after one another all game long. Unsportsman's lack. Dead ball foul. 
do it again. Top of the screen, watch these two guys. Deion Sanders likes to try to intimidate receivers, but Jennings, remember, he doesn't eat it. He tries to intimidate people himself. He is 6'4", and he's blocking them downfield. They get a little fight and pushing match. No blood, no foul. Johnson bending into the huddle. Coley is 88. Eight yards for the first down. Johnson the lone setback. Williams to throw. Near side incomplete. Overthrew the intended receiver. Way over Cooper's head. And Clemson must punt it away at the 9.42 mark. Rodney Williams 0 for 8 this half. But just when you start to count him out, he'll come up and make a play on you. Well, we've seen it game after game in the fourth quarter when they really need it. Somehow, some way, he gets his team in a position to at least attempt to win the game. Just as that man has done in this game. Deion Sanders with one great return for a touchdown already this afternoon. Dardaki, the freshman, gets another one off. The return is set. Deion Sanders at the 20-yard line tries to cut it back. And he is swarmed by that Clemson special team at the 29-yard line. A nine-yard return for Sanders off a 30-yard punt that time. So when you come back, it'll be Chip Ferguson and the Florida State offense going to work with a seven-point lead, 21 to 14 and 9.30 to play. frequently is a game of big plays and here are the two biggest of the afternoon for Seminole fans this the electrifying 76 yard punt return by the fastest athlete on the field Deion Sanders and moves like this and acceleration have the pro scouts drooling up here in the press box then the next time they got the ball Chip Ferguson who's had the hot hand short drop as Pat Hayden explained and he gets it down to Lassane a 36 yard reception but don't forget Anthony reaching back and recovering his own fumble just prior to that reception. Nothing bigger than that moment either for the Seminoles. Now, first and ten. Ferguson has the offense up at the line of scrimmage. They run the draw package with Floyd. And the penalty marker comes down. <laughs> Somebody was guilty because I saw three flags. The holding. Pat, what about the coaching strategy as far as Florida State is concerned here with about nine and a half minutes to go on a seven-point lead? Holding. Ten yard penalty against the offense. Well, this is the time in the game where you really would like to be able to run the ball, grind out some first downs, and use the clock up. But Florida State is not that kind of team. It would be a mistake for them to try to do that now. We've seen some drama packed games here in Death Valley the last few years on CBS last year David Treadwell hit that field goal to beat Georgia with time running out could be coming down to another one here this afternoon Ferguson complete to Lassane and the junior wide receiver battles his way out close to a first down He's caught three passes for 66 yards. Oregon over Washington State, and the Cougars had started quickly. Louisville, Howard Schnellenberger ahead of Memphis State in the third quarter. Illinois pounding Utah in the second. John McAvick may get a win. Florida will check in on their home in two weeks when LSU goes down to Gainesville. Big battle in the Southeastern Conference. Which team is the strongest? You can test Auburn next week, and then the following week, Florida and LSU. The second down, Smith is stretched and down. You know, I want to correct the mistake. I mean, I said he was close to a first down. Obviously, with the penalty, he had 20 yards to go. So that was a second and 14. So they're still a long way from a, from a first down. This will leave them with a third and nine. Yeah, this Clemson uh, defense has done a marvelous job of run support, particularly the, the defensive secondary. They've got about 10 or 12 tackles between each corner. He fights off the wide receiver that's lot and then puts the stop on Sammy Smith. Terrific defense. Lassane and Lewis are the wide men. Ferguson. Flushed from the pocket by Johnson. Johnson running him down from behind. 
forces the incompletion. Florida State must punt at the 739 mark. Clemson comes up with a big defensive effort. And Corlew was only able to get off a 25 yarder last time out. Wolford moving back inside his 40 yard line. Gets a dandy off here. Drives Wolford to the 25. Donnell battles his way back to the 34 yard line. A nine yard return, but a 44 yard punt by Corlew. Florida State 21, Clemson 14, 728 to go. We'll be right back. This is not a conference game. Florida State an independent. Clemson a member of the ACC, but the game does carry title ramifications. So Coach Ford and his staff must consider what can happen here in the final hectic minutes. If they are able to score, do they kick for the tie or go for two and try to win? Ford was non-committal yesterday, but you would think as Williams pitches to Allen and Allen catches the corner for a first down. You would think, Pat, that he would have to go for a two in his effort to reach the goal of a national championship. He cannot afford to get out of here with a tie right now either. Particularly with, with as well as his fullback has run in short yardage situations. But the important thing, first of all, is to get that ball into the end zone. And I think they can't afford to be stopped and punt the ball and wonder if they're going to get the ball back. they got to keep moving the chains in this series. Well, they've had to punt on all five of their possessions so far this year. They have only 73 total yards. But that was a fine first down burst that time. Now they come with the fullback. And the penalty marker is down. McFadden in at fullback, but the penalty marker thrown along the line of scrimmage from the side. There haven't been any turnovers. Illegal ship on the offense. But there have been 15 penalties in this game. So that illegal shift nullifies a good game. Illegal shift on the offense. Repeat. The ball is marked back. Let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien, Pat. Well, Brent, I'll have to admit we've been eavesdropping down here, and the coaching staff at Clemson gave their players a little history lesson. They reminded them that the Tigers are a big fourth-quarter team, and they said you've waited three weeks for this. They got about seven minutes to do it. Back to you. All right, Pat. First and 15 for the Tigers. Ball back on the 40. They show motion. Throw near side complete to Hooper. Rodney Williams with his first completion of the second half with 6.54 to go, and it was a big 19-yard gain for a first down. You know, Rodney Williams is amazing because he can miss eight passes in a row, but when you really need him, when the game is on the line, somehow he finds a way to do it. He took a lick after he threw that pass as well. Took a nice shot, but he hung in there. He knew he was going to get hit. Found the one-on-one -on -one coverage and drilled the ball in there. Ball at the Florida State 41-yard line. Johnson and Allen in the backfield. Jennings is in motion. Allen stumbles as he comes across the line and gains only a couple of yards. That was Eric Hayes who tripped him up. You know, Brent, Rodney Williams probably will not play a down in pro football. He didn't have that kind of arm, but that doesn't matter. He is a great college quarterback. He has done all that Danny Ford has asked him here for four years. He's led his team. He fought, put his team in the end zone. He's won big ball games. None bigger than this one right now. Second and eight. Number one, Miami trailing at Ann Arbor. Number three, Clemson behind here in South Carolina. Johnson couldn't get free at the line of scrimmage. He was stacked up. This will leave Clemson with third and long. Harvard rolls, and that losing streak continues. John Dockery will be happy, and uh, some of you are probably wondering why he's not with us, and because of the unfortunate uh, ailment suffered by Hank Stram. John Dockery has moved over to the National Football League, so we welcome Pat O'Brien here this afternoon. And we certainly want to send along our best to the coach, Hank Stram, who's recuperating in the hospital, and he plans to be back in just a few weeks. Third and long, complete, but short of a first down. He had to get to the 31-yard line 
And he got to the 33. This is going to leave fourth and two with Butler and Deion Sanders on the stop. The play call critical. And I think Danny has got to go for it. You, just, you don't know whether he's going to get the ball back. Five minutes on the clock. He must get to the 31-yard line. Tracy Johnson, the fullback, has been sensational all day in short yardage. He's right behind the quarterback. He's got it. He slid off a block and a would-be tackle beautifully that time. And it's going to be very close. The Florida State staff are very concerned about the mark. The mark will tell it all. It is very close. arguing that the chain was not free that part of the linkage in the chain was tied up they had already signaled first down there's going to be a rhubarb over this now the defensive captain can ask him to measure again Deion Sanders said that chain there was more to come now let's see what happens first down four minutes and 32 seconds important is the spot on this play again it's not where his knee goes down but where the ball is when his knee goes down he did slide about a half a yard but I think the official brought it back and marked it properly Cooper and Cooper are the wide one here's Johnson again and breaks free of the first tackle down to the 27 yard line. Brent, if I think you're thinking defense and Florida State defense, you have to force Rodney Williams to beat you with his arm. You have to take away the fullback. If you have to put eight or nine men up the line of scrimmage, but force him to throw it. That's in the third quarter. Allen is the tailback. He takes the toss, turns it upfield on the left side. Ball's free, recovered by Clemson. The wide receiver fell on the ball. Keith Jennings recovering for the Tigers. A break for Clemson and a first down. A wide receiver can make a big play in a lot of ways, and not just with a catch. It can be a block, as Jennings has all day long, and this time it's the fumble recovery. Allen's doing his best to pick up as many yards as he can. The ball is stripped there by Corrin, but there's number 87, heads-up play by Jennings. 3.26 to go. First down for Clemson. The ball is at the Florida State, 18. Allen into the middle. Banging his way for three or four yards. Clemson has fumbled the ball four times today, Brent, but have not lost any of them. Timeout is being called by Florida State. Timeout Seminoles. They had only ten players on the field. We'll be right back. Well, with Pat Hayden and Pat O'Brien, I'm Brent Musk. We have 3.13 to go. Florida State has exhausted its timeouts by calling that one. There seemed to be confusion with the number of Seminoles on the field. It's believed that they had only 10, and that's why they used that timeout. There are 3.13 left on the clock. Florida State leads Clemson by seven, and Danny Ford must consider what to do if he punches in this touchdown. It's our feeling that because of his success in short yardage, there's no doubt what he will do here. He tosses to Allen. He's cut off and surrounded. No daylight that time. Smith bringing him down, and that makes it second and long and for the Tigers. Very good defense by Florida State. Again, make Rodney Williams beat you with his arm. Don't let the fullback beat you up the middle. Second down. 11 yards 
for the first down. The fullback is free in the middle. Touchdown! Touchdown, Clemson! the backup quarterback to hold. Sile to kick it. It is through. We are tied at 21. And my first question to you, Pat Hayden, is what did you think of that decision with two and a half minutes to go? I think it's the right decision because there is two and a half minutes left and his team has two timeouts remaining. He wants to play defense again. But watch the block by the right guard, Phillips, clear the way for Tracy Johnson. And he's going to fumble, but he had crossed the plane before he had done that. And that's tremendous determination by Johnson, who's done it all day long. You're going to watch some good blocks right down here as they all crack. The fullback is going to run right through here. He hucks, he really hugs the blocks, and the outside linebacker runs right by him. He's taking the quarterback. But you see the way Johnson hugs those blocks, and then his determination from the three-yard line in. Brent, I think, again, it's the right decision there to go for one with 2.32 remaining, and your team still has two timeouts. And Florida State without any timeouts. So 2.32. Two field goal specialists. Rusty Sile has handled the kicking so far, and he'll kick off. But the freshman, Chris Gardaki, who has punted all day, is still available, too, if they can get the ball back. That's a huge number right there. Clemson with two timeouts remaining and Florida State with none. Bobby Bowden has been known to run reverses on kickoff returns. With these two return men. Ross and Carter. Ross comes up near the 20. Breaks free. He's at the 30 and stopped right there. Let's find out about that timeout situation. There are penalty flags going down right now. There are penalty flags on the near side, so we'll hold just a second before we check with Pat. I'm sure he's got the details on that timeout being used by Florida State. There's the clip, and it's a costly penalty against Florida State. And the ball will be taken back and spotted at the 15-yard line. Florida State has been penalized nine times for 86 yards in this game as Ferguson confers with the head coach. Plenty of time. Chip Ferguson just cannot force it here. Be patient. Throw the ball to your tight end. The crowd is about to become a factor in Death Valley. Listen to it. In. It'll be tough to hear. First down, Carter. Now, let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien. Pat, what happened? Brent, just to confirm what you had said, they counted only 10 men on the field, so they called their final timeout. And you're right on two things. The crowd is unbelievably loud down here. Let's go back to you. All right, Pat, thank you. I'd like to take credit for that, but it has to go to Jimmy Tubbs. He was doing the counting. I have a hard time once we get past five. It is second down and about four yards to go. Dexter Carter quickly up in Ferguson's ear, checking on something. Ferguson to throw. Time. Dropped by Lassane, who has been sensational this afternoon, but not that time. Brent, I think that ball was tipped, and the ball, he thought the ball was going to get there very quickly, and somehow when it got tipped, some of the momentum was off it, and he lost his concentration. And he got tipped there by that linebacker, and that's why Lassane dropped the ball. One 
39. Third down. Number 95 got a finger on that ball. Ferguson with time and he loses it. A diving effort for the interception. And it's incomplete. He lost the grip coming forward. Perhaps the ball was wet and it slipped out. Now two timeouts and a minute and a half with which to work. I think he changed his mind. I think he was trying to bring the ball back. And then it slipped out of his hands. It should have been intercepted. It appeared for just the briefest of moments that Taylor had the ball, but as he hit the ground, it came free. Now Carlo standing back. Hi, it's a fake. They ran the fake for a first down. Florida State springs the big play. It's Leroy Butler down the side. Butler out of bounds at the one-yard line. What a gutsy call by Bobby Bowden. The ball was snapped to the up back. The up back, number 49, Dane Williams, gets the ball. Then he's going to go around and he hits, hands the ball to Leroy Butler, and he faked everybody out. Unbelievable. And Butler in a foot race for the end zone. 78 yards. And that ball has been spotted at the one yard line. And this stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, is in a state of shock. Just when they were contemplating having the ball back with a minute and a half on that clock. Now 1.20 to go. The Seminoles with Williams the fullback. Ian Ferguson collide. It'll be second and goal. Williams jumped in and appeared to come on the wrong side. And if time becomes a factor in your Bobby Bowden, you got to be concerned about your field goal team. Remember, Richie Andrews, his field goal kicker, is 0 for 3 on the year. And when you're not a good running team, these are the toughest yards to get. Was that the call of the season? Unbelievable. The element of surprise, Bobby Bowden has always believed in it. I thought it was going to be a fake punt, but then when the up back handed it to Leroy Butt Butler, that was icing on the cake. We don't have any timeouts. Yeah, exactly. Trying to call timeouts. It's got to be a penalty. There are no timeouts remaining. They'd already used them up. The officials don't know that yet. 35 seconds showing on that clock. They don't have any timeouts. The officials trying to sort it out at the line of scrimmage. That should be a penalty. That is a big break for Florida State. Williams for the touchdown. Florida State will beat Clemson this afternoon. the argument between the coach and the officials. Danny knows that the time had run out on the 25 second clock. That's well, what he was arguing down there. Plus Brent there should have been a penalty when they tried to call a timeout the official signal and they didn't have any left. Now the Florida State staff on the field. changed they have not given him the touchdown Bobby's just going to go for the three points here and remember Andrews is 0 for 3 on the year 
Sanders had a 24 yarder block today. And this is a, I, I think this is a very tough angle for a kicker too, Brent. Why? What's this? Is he going to explain it to the crowd? Scoreboard still shows 21-21. Now the officials are conferring with the press box about the sequence over here. The 25-second clock expired during that controversy. In Florida State, rammed it into the end zone, but the scoreboard has not changed. And the clock was just set back to 35 seconds. Well, the first thing that happened which really surprised me, you're not allowed to call a timeout when you've used all your timeouts. It shows on that down marker across the way, it shows second down. would Bobby have his field goal kicker out there for second down with 35 seconds to go. I think he broke. cannot stop it. Either. Obviously he's out of timeouts so he must kick it right now. There's the clock stopped at 35 when all the confusion was going at this point Florida State realized they shouldn't have called a timeout. It now, the clock was stopped and it can't be stopped at right. They had stopped it because they thought it was a timeout. So the touchdown apparently does not count, but Andrews nails the field goal. 19 yards on the field goal. But they still got the timeout. That clock should have been running that whole time. They were penalized, Pat, just when you said that they should be penalized for calling the timeout. We get clarification. They were, the officials were confused as to when they did it. Touchdown does not count. That's what happened in that sequence. So it came back and the field goal was kicked. But now, can't Coach Ford be asking the referee why they didn't mark it off? Let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Brent, the word here now is that the 25 second clock was not started. They blew the whistle, but because of the crowd noise, they didn't hear it. That's from the officials. Let's go back to you. I'm not sure that that's true, what the officials told him, because we think it expired up here. But at any rate, 32 seconds, the scoreboard shows Florida State ahead by a field goal. And Brent, I think this is a good argument why you shouldn't have split crews. I think there's just too much confusion when you have officials from different conferences. Now, the clock should not be stopped here, but Brent, I think it was stopped again because the officials, when Florida State first called that timeout, when they didn't have any, the official incorrectly stopped the clock. Well, they ran this play, and the clock was running. That appeared to be a touchdown. It appeared to be the score that would put it away, and the extra point unit came on the field. Now, Coach Ford was out complaining. And then they decided the touchdown didn't count, but they didn't mark it a yardage off. And from that spot, Florida State kicked a field goal to make it 24-21. And right now, Clemson has to try to gather itself. They've got 32 seconds. They still have two timeouts remaining. Now, Florida State tried to call that timeout because the 25-second clock was running down. And only three seconds left. They tried to stop it. Now, the officials might have forgotten that Bowden and his staff were out of timeouts. They could not stop it, and they should have been penalized in that situation, and yards should have been marked off. At any rate, we've got 32 seconds left on the clock. Here is the kickoff. Henderson, from two yards deep, brings it out for the Tigers. Out to the 26-yard line, 27 seconds to go. Now, two timeouts to go, but an awful lot of real estate. And a quarterback whose strong suit is not necessarily throwing the ball, but, but getting his team into position to win is. Remember, his Gardaki, his field goal kicker, has a long of 46 yards this year, and they would need to gain 45 yards to put him in position to kick a 46-yarder. Jennings.
Williams and Cooper are to Williams' right. Cooper is to his left. Deep over the middle for Jennings, incomplete. It'll be second down in 22 seconds left on the clock. Again, this is the type of situation where you just have to spread the field out, throw the ball downfield, and hope something happens. Joe Montana did it last week against the Giants. But we go back to one moment that, because of the controversy, was overlooked, and that was the fact that Florida State was willing to take that enormous gamble on in that punt five. situation. Yep. On, on fourth, fourth and, five. and five, they ran the reverse, and Butler busted it off inside the five yard. And that still stands out as the huge play of the game. Williams back, deflected, and it'll be third and 10 and 17 seconds left here in Death Valley. It's got to be a heartbreaking loss for Clemson, too, because of the, how hard they played and put themselves. They were just the kind of game they wanted, a close one they thought they could win in the fourth quarter. Do you believe when we asked Coach Bowden, uh, did you understand why you were favored today? He said at the end, he said, no, I can't understand it. He said, I sure hope they know something. <laughs> Apparently they did. Florida State 24, Clemson 21, third and 10. Trips to the right. He's got to get it in the air and almost caught on the deflection that time by Cooper. Time down to 10 seconds. Fourth down and an emotional shootout in Clemson, South Carolina. Boy, that was really a mess down there by the end zone, wasn't it? Yeah, again, I think that I think happened. we got it all straight now that that's, that's what it was. Yep. Again, I think uh, split crews, crews have difficult times in situations yeah. like that, Brent. There'll be a lot of questions yeah. that the reporters will have after this one. Yeah, again, on a fourth and ten situation, I think you give your big guy who's 6'4 a chance to go up and get the pass. Williams back, throws it, Cooper in the air and could not hold on, and that will do it. Florida State comes to Death Valley and stages a terrific second half comeback to gain back a measure of respect they lost a couple of weeks ago in the Orange Bowl in Miami when they were wiped out 31 to nothing. Here they were behind by seven being badly outplayed at the half. And they get some huge plays from their special teams. That has been a trademark of Bobby Bowden's coaching success through the years. And is that staff ever relieved to be headed back home to Tallahassee with a huge win? And they are back in the hunt for a national championship. Meanwhile, the heartbreak that is being felt over here on this sideline. The game they needed to win. As Bowden, the last time he came in here was with a West Virginia team to practice for a bowl game. It's his first game in here as a coach. And Bowden wins it. The Seminoles, 24. The Tigers, 21. And Bobby is searching out Coach Ford. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat? First of all, Coach, uh, tough loss for you. What was the controversy there at the end? I don't believe they had any timeouts left. And uh, they blew the whistle there. But they, they did a nice job. And they made a heck of a call. It was a real fine call by them on the putt formation. They did a wonderful job winning the ball game. Great. What will you tell your team now, Coach? Well, we got a lot of work to do. Get back and get their, get their spirits up right now. Thanks for stopping. Coach Bowden, congratulations. Well, what was you. your view of that controversy at the end? You mean at the end down there? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't. I'll be honest. He told me what happened. I really don't give a darn. We won the ball game. You had no timeouts left. Yeah, we had, we had, we had no timeouts left, and we couldn't do what we wanted to do. We just had to score, so that's why the, that's why the field goal. You pulled off the element of surprise again. How about that play, the reverse? Well, unless you want to get beaten, you got to do it every now and then. What will you tell your new grandson about this game? I'll give him a game ball. <laughs> congratulations. Back to Brent. All right. Congratulations to Coach Bobby Madden and the entire Seminole coaching staff. This was the moment. The fake punt on fourth and five. Wolford set to return it. And here they come. Everybody running to the right. No one knew where the ball was for... Just enough time for Leroy Butler, the junior, to come down the sideline for 
Well, in a game that featured everything, the Chevrolet most valuable players are Leroy Butler, who raced 78 yards off a faked punt for Florida State to set up their win, and from Clemson fullback Tracy Johnson. He's a running back who carried it 17 times for 69 yards. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Coming up now tonight on CBS, a CBS special. Jackie Gleason in the great one and West 57th Street. Then tomorrow, join us at 12.30 Eastern Time when the NFL today will kick off a full Sunday of doubleheader action on CBS. For Pat Hayden and Pat O'Brien, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long from Death Valley, South Carolina.